Periscope. All right, y'all. Welcome for another episode of Something for the People. Um, tonight we have two special guests. Um, first, I'm here with my co-host Swagger Don, and our two guests for tonight, BX Suave and the Queen of the South, Miss Bonnie. Welcome, y'all. Salute, salute. So, thank you, thank you. Before we get into like the topic of the night and any questions, let, let I, I want to kind of touch on something real quick because I've been seeing this like all over social media. Um, the whole Kim Porter thing. You know, there's been a lot of conspiracies thrown out there that, you know, Diddy has something to do with it. And because she had this supposedly tell all book coming out and and all this. I just wanted to get everybody's view on it, which, y'all, you know, your personal thoughts are. We'll start with BX. Well, honestly speaking, I haven't really been up on the topic. This is like maybe like the second or third time I've been hearing about it. But the most I can say about that, honestly, Diddy mm. Tom was up. That's my opinion. I don't think everybody's going to agree with me, but I think um, Diddy Tom was up. The last um, kind of serious situation he's ever been in like that really was the Biggie Small situation, and it's been long overdue. That's my opinion on that. Don't hate me, but I think um, hey, his quote unquote don't. I mean, I'm not going to say quote unquote because I want to. I ain't quote this from nobody. This is just for me. Hey man, Tom was up. So you think and some you, had to give. So you think karma is coming from him? Is that what you're saying? Uh if you if you if you want to call if you want to call those um them people the um karma. Okay. If you want to call that, if you want to call them karma. Yeah. Go I ahead. just think Go ahead, be it. I just think after it's like Noriega said, after a certain level of success, after a certain amount of things, it's kind of ironic how these tragedies happen mysteriously out the blue. Just think about what you just said. She was coming out with an all tell book. Hey, Puff. Hey, Mr. Combs. You can't let her do that. What you going to do I about mean, that? I mean, the book can still come out, though, whether she's alive or not. True. True, but that's why I say, in my opinion, his time his time was due. Some had to give. You ain't you you ain't contributed in a long time. Mm. Mm. Swag, what that's you what think? Wrong myself. I think um, it's unfortunate what happened to Miss Porter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I'm sorry. I meant to say that. Definitely unfortunate what happened to her. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? What happens or whatever case may be. And, you know, drama sells. So, you know, um, with um, everybody been playing with that in the top, in, in, the, in, the, um, in, in the entertainment world, the whole thought of that whole, you know, Puff setting Biggie up, Puff doing this, Puff doing that, whatever case may be. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and play ass now. Like, I don't, I, I don't think some of it may be true or whatever case may be. It's not. It's not for me to, to decide. It's for the people to decide, or for the courts to decide. Whenever that comes comes about, if there is a tell all book, I hope I hope it does come out. You know what I'm saying? So the truth will be revealed, or whatever case may be. Other than that, it's like you know drama sells. So it, it, it's it's unfortunate that you know what I'm saying her death had to had to come at a time where people people still being petty and want to throw her name and stuff like that. You know what I mean, that's just petty. You know what I mean, right? I know I'm petty. You know what I'm saying so. so you know what I mean, I know that's what. Right. And, and I, I to add on to that, because I had to think I was sitting here as you was talking and I was thinking about something. The reason why I really kind of say that, you know, it, it's maybe past time overdue because Karen Stefan did the same shit. Ain't nothing to happen to her. That's that's true. Yeah. Is she, is she you know think Karen Stefan did the, there's a few people who did the same thing and ain't nothing happened to her. Why Kim Porter? Because she want to come out with it. It makes you think, like, damn, that shit ain't happening. Karen Stevens told everything. Shaq, everybody. She blew it up. Yeah. What was so different about Kim Porter saying she want to drop a bomb and now all mysteriously, you know what I mean? She's no longer with us. Makes she rest in peace. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. To me, I really think that music shit with all that shit, it's a little bit deeper than we want to believe it mm -hmm. or than we want to let our eyes see. Mm -hmm. But, like, again, I quote from Noriega in his interview. And, and this music shit, you got your left, you got your right, and then you got your middle. Yeah. Vani, what you think about it? 
That's a fact. Honestly, I, I don't do the drama and, and follow along with all of that. I really just think it's um, people should leave it alone and let the family agree. Everything is going to come out um, in the long run. So at this point, I just really you know, don't have any insight or input into that drama. May she rest in peace, and I hope her family can grieve. And like y'all said, the truth will come out. So exactly. everybody needs to just chill and let it let it play out. Right. Well, I will say this, um, from my opinion on the subject, um, a lot of people didn't. I mean, I understand the conser- conspiracy theories behind Puff because, you know, Puff did have a lot of shady dealings. A lot of people that surround or do business with Puff you know, end up in some fucked up situations, Loon, Shine, you know, Craig Mack. I mean, the list goes on. But I think... Triple X. Yeah, I think in in this particular situation, he actually loved that woman. Even though he wasn't... They weren't together. They were on great terms. They were doing the great co-parenting thing, Mm -hmm. you know. However, a lot of people kind of skip over the fact that Kim had a coke problem also. And... They said she died from cardiac arrest because she was having some complications um, from pneumonia for like two weeks ago. A lot of people, if you're not familiar with somebody who does coke or if you're not, you know, familiar with the habit, coke does cause pneumonia, especially if you're not taking care of yourself and you have a big habit with doing it. So it's, I mean, she could have very well, you know, her habit probably caught up to her. I mean, I'm, uh-huh. I don't think that coke causes pneumonia. I think from the the constant use of coke and the damage it does to the body leaves your body vulnerable. To- no, yeah. it, de- it definitely causes pneumonia. It, it that is for sure. It causes pneumonia. Mm. That is actually one thing. Because um, what it is that nasal pass, you know, that nasal drip that you constantly have, especially when you're doing it a lot. That is fucking up your throat, your nasal, everything, and that cause and that opens up a wound for other things such as pneumonia and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if y'all remember to back in the day, not to speak on her in a negative light, but just to you know kind of shed some light on the situation. Um, back in the day, her nanny was trying to sue her because she was saying that she had coke everywhere in the house and stuff like that, and you know. So, I mean, it's not a far stretch that her habit probably caught up with her. You know, you know, what, you know what gets to me? It seems like in this music industry, mm-hmm. there's only two way out. A tragic accident or something health-wise. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just listening to y'all and it just seems crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Whether she had that a, a habit or not, it seems to be always a tragic accident or drugs fuck with somebody health. Let's take it to Bernie Mac. Died of ammonia. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like me personally, I I, I go with I go with Vonnie on, on on that on her saying that too, because we all just have an opinion about this shit. We all just have opinion about the pub with the cam. You know, Aaliyah, um, Dame Dash. Yeah. We all, it's just all an opinion. We all see, and you know what's crazy? We all saying something, but for some odd reason, what each one of us is saying always links with each other somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in my opinion, you know, like, may she rest in peace, but it's kind of crazy how every time you turn around in music, ironically, somebody just died. And that person who was close to whoever miraculously just goes up another level. I'm sorry. It's like I said before, it seemed like after Bernie Mac died, Steve Harvey became the new king of comedy of all talk shows and everything. Like, you know, this is why I try, my opinion, people get mad at me when I say, ah, you stuck on that. No, niggas, I see things different than other people see. I, I, I'm looking deeper. I want to see what else. You just taking things off the surface. I want to see deeper in it. What's going on? It's right. Nice. Right. You know? I, I definitely agree. I mean, there's always some type of tragedy surrounding a lot of these artists' deaths. Well, in the music industry, anyway. I'm not so sure about you know actors and stuff like that. But with the music industry, there's always look at um the boy from Criss Cross. 
had a terrible past. A lot of people that, I mean, our, our age group remember, I don't know if y'all remember, but back in the day, you know, they had said that they were molested. And then all of a sudden it just went away. And that boy was dealing with that for years. And then all of a sudden, now he's overdosed from drugs. I, listen, I believe hey, that. Which, which one? You said from Chris Cross? Yeah. Then he died. Of, did he die of cancer? No. One of the one of the Chris's died of cancer. With the light skin one. Light skin one. Yeah. But the dark skin one is the one who actually died from um, an overdose of drugs or something of that nature. It's crazy, yo. I mean, let's, but you look at like this. Our, our country is flooded with drugs. Our, 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 our country is flooded with drugs and has drugs all going through it. So I mean, the yeah. the, the fact of anybody um of just entertainers is not just entertainers. This is an epidemic. It's happening all around the country. A lot of people are dying. Look at the opiates. The opiate epidemic. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? How people are just dropping out, and and, and 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 we don't notice it. We notice it. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't, we watch the news every day. We see it, whatever case may be, but we don't. It don't take impact to us until somebody, be our favorite person, have, it happens to. Right. Um, our favorite artist or something like that. When when they mm -hmm. when they uh, when they oh, when they overdose or whatever case may be, it's like oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. Overdose. You know what I'm saying? I mean, People yeah, that happens all over the world, but I definitely think it's like a big problem within Hollywood, a huge problem, along with pedophilia. And other things going on. You know why it comes with it? They got you know the money why, to buy. You know why those drugs why come with it? You know why all them drugs come with that success? Not why. What person they right mind could handle that much business, that many shows, and all of that, and all of that, and a daily routine and all that without having something to keep them up. There's no way you person could do about eight, nine interviews, and then they got a concert tonight. Yo, listen, take this right here, man. It's going to keep you up. It's been working for me. And they hearing this shit from people like Usher, Wrecking High Execs. Listen, man, this shit been keeping me up. How you think I got my success, man? And without that, man, you're going to get tired. You ain't going to be able to wake up in the morning. And that's all. It and what better way? Because think about it. The ones that are using drugs, this is the excuse they use when they die. They was into coke. They was into this. They was into that. The ones that don't use drugs, that wasn't drinking and getting high, they died in a tragic, a tragic accident. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, like he said, everybody's dying of drugs throughout the world. Right. Everybody. Every day, somebody. Not even every day, somebody. Every day, millions of people probably overdosing on drugs. You know what I mean? Right. What make this situation different? We got to think about it. Look at what's his name, Mac Miller. Uh huh. This kid ain't even touched thirty. He ain't touched thirty years old. Yeah. In my mind, I doubt he was doing that much drugs till he overdosed. Because I seen his last interview. That boy looked as healthy as all hell. See, but you got to also remember though, Suave, that um, a, a lot of these um drug overdose, whatever case it be, they've been finding they've been finding like fentanyl. Yup, yeah. and that's an instant killer. And then. In Mac Miller's case, I, I I don't quote me on this now, but I, I I do remember them saying that he was taking uppers and downers at the same time. Yeah, which cause will cause his heart to defibrillate. You know what I'm saying, and right. just skip uh, and skip a couple of beats. They would throw they would throw the rhythm off too during the cardiac arrest. Right. So it's unfortunate. So, it makes it, it makes us it makes us look at. It makes us look at people when, when you when you think about that. You see, the reason why, I, I'm going to go with you two on that, and I, I, I'm i not being no hypocrite. And all that. I go with you two on that, too, because it is interviews I've seen that he said he was using drugs before music. He did get high before music. But what about those who didn't, like, when they first, look at Rihanna. When she came in, she was like the princess, Miss Beauty. You, could, you couldn't find, she looked like the... Think about it. Where who's introducing these drugs to them? Like I don't think a lot of them come in drug addicts. No, of so course. I'm still not. blaming. I'm still blaming it on the music industry. I'm still blaming it on the industry because somebody coming to listen. You're gonna need this. Take I mean, this. listen though, Swamp. I've been in many a studio. I've been in many a studios. I've been around studios and seen things. I even things you can't even take back. You know what I'm saying? But I've never said. Yo, man, let me dive into that big bag of cocaine. <laughs> 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 
it's on you to take it, whether it's there or not. That's on you to sniff that or right. smoke that or shoot you know that. What I, you, you know gotta what I have think? A, you got to have a strong mind if you want to be in that type of environment. Sometimes right. that little person on your shoulder can be a little bit more persuasive than your thoughts can carry, though. But you know what no, I also I'm think it all. is? I think that, you know, they have all this unlimited income. Nobody's saying no to them, you know. So I think that, you know, once they achieve a certain epitome of fame, they're like, okay, this that was their high at first, the fame. Now that that no longer suits them, okay, well, let me try a little bit of coke. All right, that's no longer suiting me. Let me try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I think that's kind of where it goes within the Hollywood circle. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was it was one point in time. I'm not even going to mention no names, though. At one point in time, I remember uh, going to the studio and dealing with uh, and dealing with uh, a certain producer, whatever the case may be. And that's how he kept us in the studio. I'm, I, got the, I got the Hennessy. I got the loud. Y'all going to pull yeah. up? Yeah. Pull up, pull up, pull up. And kept us in there writing, kept us in there hungry and writing, and kept it kept feed, feeding us all night. Cause, I yeah. Eat, yeah, smoke some more, drink some more. And I was young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, one you know, of the yeah. viewers, Barry. Fortunately, it wasn't nothing. That, it wasn't I'm going to tell you something. The worst studio, the worst studio I ever been in was a studio that had, it was like a little mini bar in it. Mm. That's the word. I ain't going to lie. That's the um, worst too. and some of the worst music I ever recorded. Because in your mind, you think you sound like you the shit. Oh man! And then when you play that shit back, you like what the? Yo, I was down south. I was down. One south. of the um, not to cut you off, Spad, but one of the um viewers said, "Drugs is not the problem. It's the people that use the drugs. It's people's psychology, mind state." What do y'all mm. think about that? It Fact. is. Fact. Right. Because if you if you if you're weak enough if you're weak enough to fall to fall victim to that, then it like you can you're to blame, but only but so much. You know what I'm saying because mm -hmm. it's there, it's there, it's available. You know what I'm saying everybody else is doing it now. They gonna socially make you feel unaccepted, like you're not in the loop, and, and draw you into that. Some people fall victim to that, like oh man, I want to be socially accepted. Let me let me dive right in. And some right. people, like, and the done. reason why, they, and the reason why they fall victim to it, because they're at they're standing before the person that they used to look at, like oh my god, I can't wait to meet them, and they see what they doing, and that person is in their face, like oh listen, man, this is how I did it. You can have a strong mind, but when you standing before somebody that you idolize, that you look up to that strong mind it kind of tends to deflate because now the person that you've been idolizing and looking up to is before you and you've been thinking they've been right the whole time so you're not going to turn them down because now you think two right. things this person's going to think i'm a weak person or he's going to think i'm not a weak person he's going to think ah oh, this dude ain't cool he don't want to make it or I'm not going to make it in the end because I don't want to do what he's doing. So I'm not going to make it to his level. Damn, I'm fucked up. These are the choices. How bad do I really want? Man, fuck it. It's just a little bump of coke. Let me get that. Bang, bang. Right. Hey, dog, that coke going to have you wired up. You're going to need this That's to calm you down. I, uh, Trust me. After them shows, you're going to need to relax. Like, Here, take that. If you have Bonnie. Some people, you know what I mean, it's it's whatever you accept. I'm not going to agree with that statement at all because it's whatever you accept. That's just like, oh, everybody jumping off cliffs. Are you going to go jump off the cliff? I'm not. You, you know what I mean? There's certain it's, things. If you want to sell your soul, sell your soul. Jump off it's certain limitations that I'm not going to take. It's certain limitations I'm not going to take when it comes to certain, you know, whoever I'm idolizing. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Do that over there. You know what and I mean? If you don't want to put me on your buddies. label or give me an opportunity because I'm turning down drugs or alcohol, then I don't want to be a part of this organization in the first place. And that's, so, and that's what makes you different from them. Period. And that's what makes you different from them. See, this is why you as an artist and me as an artist, because we're not the type to accept no shit like that. This is where we come in and we try to bring the difference to it. You got some people that can't think, don't, that don't think like us, and this is the ones they want. Those are the ones that fall victim. The ones that don't fall victim, do you realize they're not the ones on top? Or if they was the ones right. on top, they're not on top anymore because they finally realized what was happening to them. Them. As, if you notice that the ones that end up in tragedies and all that, they finally seen, oh shit, look what's happening to me. They start talking about it. Now, miraculously, something happened. Now, you're right. 
It is based on that person. But we're one of the many few who will do that. You have a lot of people that are like, fuck that. I got to go in that room. Fuck it. I'm going in that room. Ain't nobody going to nobody. You're going to give me millions. I'm with that. You, you got some people who think like that. Yeah. You got some yeah. people who that agree like that. This is what good and evil comes in at. This is the balance of life. We can't sit there and be like, we can't sit here and be like, well, damn, we wouldn't do There's people out there who would do that. This is what keep us like, well, I'm not going to do that. I see what it's doing to that person. I'm not going to do that. But you got some people who can't think like us. This is why we think for them. Okay. True. Very true. That's very true. I just feel like, you know, <clears throat> like Bonnie said, to piggyback off what she said, you know, you do have to have a strong mind. Everybody is not built the same. Every mind, mind frame is not the same. It really depends on the individual. If you go into that situation with a weak ass mind, then that industry is going to eat you up period and that's right. for any potential artist that's watching this live right now you gotta have a strong mind frame not just you know socially with these drugs and dealing with the you know different people of um you know walks of life in the industry but business as well because if y'all know your shit going in there oh they're gonna tear your ass two pieces two pieces you'll be, you be thinking you 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 know matter of fact case in point um one of the ex-members of the pussycat doll oh, she was in a, a group of five girls she thought they were a singing group she says no we were singing and we just happened to be famous but we was really a prostitute in the prostitution ring so there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes you know what I mean? That they wasn't really catching up on. And next thing you know, they know they are being put in situations where they're fucking executives and stuff like that being pushed into stuff. And she chose to walk away from it. My point is, if you don't come into it with a strong mind, they're going to fuck you up. You know who said you know who said something similar to that? And I was who? watching Dave Chappelle. Uh -huh. Remember what he said? His father said to him. If the price ever become higher than what you expected, like it's like saying, but you know what I mean? It's like saying that some people don't see that. Yeah. Some people don't understand. You got you got some people, you got people standing in front of you right now with the power to change your life, with the power to put enough money in your hand so where you ain't got the one. Some people look at that as like. No disrespect to females, because you got some strong females out there. But you got some women that'll think about that shit at that moment and be like, my life changes for a piece of pussy. No disrespect. Or go back to struggling and all that. So you got some women who will sit there and weigh that option out to compare it to some women that will sit there and be like, what? Nigga, I'll slap the shit out to you. Who the fuck are you talking to? That's There's right. not too many that will say that. So, you know what I mean? This is why when we look at music nowadays, we look at, they all got a story of my mama was a fiend. My mama, we was hungry, six, nine. My mother was taking shoes out the garbage can. You offer a person like that $10 million, they're willing to accept anything you put on a table. But I really think that, and this is not against anybody's talent or anything like this, what I'm about to say, but I just noticed, just to pick off, piggyback off what you said, Swab, I think that the industry really does kind of seek out, you know, people that are really having some kind of problems in their home life, period. Easily influenced. Can I, can I right. say something? Can I just say something? Let's just think about this for a split second. And, I, and, and, and it may just be me. Why are 99% of the gangster rappers in a gang or once with some sort of drug dealer? Let's think about that. Well, look, 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 that's look, the narrative. Look. But that's the narrative they want them to have. Right. But listen, but, but then when you learn their background, but then when you learn some of their background, but that's you the be like, you gotta understand. It's the powers, it's the power, it's, it's the powers that be just wanting you to, to focus on that. Like the drug dealers, the way to go. You ever hear some rapper say, Back in my when I was growing up, the drug dealers who I wanted to be. Nah, I, I ain't never want to be like the drug dealers. I, 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 I that was something I settled for. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I wanted. Yo, I never wanted yo, that. I, I put that shit in my. I put something like that similar in my rum. I was like, I used to want to be like old timers until old timers started wanting to be like me. Like, 
That's a fact. That's a bar. <laughs> when you see a 50 year old nigga with his pants hanging down, you know shit is fucked up. Yeah. But you know what? Going back, going to what he said, think about it. If you come to somebody like me who actually sold drugs, who actually been doing that, who done that, because I'll be the first one to tell you, ain't no fronting in my game. I ain't never going to sit there and be like, yo, nigga, I had the whole block lock. Like, no. <laughs> I tried selling drugs for a little bit. I made a little bit of clothes money, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> the hours was long. I was just a fucking kid. It was quicker running in your pockets and running away. I'm but keeping you know it 100. You, right? you know what the industry, well, not industry, but some of these executives and labels do? They take a little piece of your story. Like, let's just say um, Queen of the South. She come in the industry. And I know her background is from uh, uh, being easy and, uh, you know, just an outright whore on the block. They take that little Stop bit. Talking. Right. They take that little bit and they make that your brand. Like Lil' yeah. Kim. Yeah. Lil' Kim was, you know, a thought. And what they do, they took that and they put that on a platter, packaged it very well. And, 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 and they made her a profitable thought. Right. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that Kim was a thought. Yo, yo, listen. I wouldn't say listen, Kim was Listen, bro, bro, she listen. Was, I'm from Brooklyn. My family, my family is from Biggie's block. I was a little dude coming up when I've seen them get on. I was like, oh shit, I used to see this fat dude. Oh shit. I used to see that chick. Oh shit. Dude, listen to me. The image that Kim portrayed, that was her. This shit that started happening afterward, that wasn't Kim. In the beginning, oh, that was her, bro. I remember that, was, that, I remember that era. That I saucy just, Brooklyn ass bitch. I ride that dead nigga. That, that was her image. I, Biggie just brought it out of her. When the, the first time, I heard, but the first she was really doing it. I didn't hear none of that sex. Like, <laughs> I heard, I heard Kim rapping. It was, it was. Wait, what you said, Vani? But they they have, that soul, so they pushed it. Vani yeah. Said. Basically, yeah, what he did was. was Oh, nah, I just did say what, sex now sex add sex your sex sex I mean, she didn't have to your rhymes and push it. She probably had some promiscuous. She probably was a little promiscuous, but you know, sex does sell. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if she's not or not. I just know she Cardi had. Do you think Cardi B would be on you know right I mean? now? So for people to pay attention to her bars, she had to bust out with the sexy. Right. Oh, That's how oh, I feel. What, what, what was that comment that David just said though? He I said, he said I, I make twenty three fifty an hour and it's not enough, so I still flip. You know what I'm saying? This, this is we, I mean, this is what we. You know what I'm saying? Listen, nobody. Do you think Cardi B? Do you think Cardi B would number nobody, one? Would be number one right now? Is she dressed like the brat when she first came out? Well, I mean, that really wasn't her. That wasn't her personality, though. That was. You know, they, yo, these artists be having people that they go behind them and say, "Yo, listen, this is how we want you to be." Yeah. This, this, this is, this is, you know what I'm saying this is what they be meaning about selling your soul. Where you're not even you, you run around being somebody else. They like, yeah. yo, this is the look that sells right now. This is what you got to do. That's like them telling me, "Yo, swag, listen, you like your rhymes, you dope." We want you to color all your dreads all different colors. I was just about to say something like that. Color teeth yeah. in your mouth. And we're gonna call you Swagashi. <laughs> <laughs> Look at fucking Fetty Wap. Fetty, ain't nothing wrong with that nigga, ah. Not one fucking thing, yo. You no, man, listen, ain't nothing wrong with Fetty Wap, ah. Ain't nothing wrong know, with that. I don't know. I, I think so, man. I don't, I don't think know. so. I, make I, make I really jacked up, though. Am I? I don't think he, I don't think he, don't think he, don't he really got an ah. Huh? I, I, think, I, think, I think his eyes really fucked up. I think that's yeah, gone. I think, I think that's gone. I think he has a glass so he can take out and put back in. Probably. Yeah, you know why? Because you know my man, my man got my man got one eye, and it's similar. It, it's yeah, definitely, like, it's I'm, definitely I'm similar. You can think. Yeah, it's certain. Yeah, it's certain things you just can't. You just can't hide. Like what's his name for? Was it Three Six Mafia? The uh -huh. dude with the weapon, three six mafia. He really had the little arm, like. Yeah, he really arm. had that little arm. Y'all ain't shit. What you <laughs> mean? Why are you going? The baby, yeah. the baby. He really had the little arm. Yo, but why y'all going? It like. <laughs> look at look look at music soul child. 
I thought my shit was lazy. That nigga shit lazy. His shit crazy. That nigga, I, I was going half crazy. crazy. He said his shit is lazy. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's funny. Um, because like a lot, like you said, swag, you know, they try to make you into something they want to sell. Like a lot, I know a lot of people, and this has been a long time room. I've I mean goes way back. Motherfucker saying that Stevie Wonder can fucking see that that nigga can see for real. No, nah, I'm done. I'm done. That's Ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell you paying me that much money to not see shit for the rest of my life and I can all see all my life. <laughs> no. Word. Like I'm like when they were saying it, like I'm like, yo, how like he could just hold up that ass forever? Like that's a yeah, long there's time no amount of money in the world to pay me to keep my eyes closed and I can see. No, no I want to see a few things. I I wanna who's looking at? It? I wanna see. I'm sorry. No, the reason why I say that, if you look, and I swear to God, there's, there is footage. There's a lot of footage. And a lot of people, at first I was like, y'all, like, yo, yo, that nigga can't see. Nah, he really blind. But when I started researching the shit, yo, I really starting to think that nigga can see. He was at a fucking event. There so let me ask you a question. Yo, Did you see on, that, on, Did you see that on YouTube? Huh? Yeah, no. You saw yeah, that on YouTube? Dead yeah, see, you can see <laughs> Jazz, leave Stevie alone. You saw alone. that on YouTube? He can't do nothing. See, all Stevie There's no he way he continued to be blind. He Yo, I'm dead ass. Life. So just listen. Yo, so look. They was at an event, okay? And this, I'm not even joking. I'm just bringing, bringing some shit to the light. He, mm -hmm. They was at an event. It was a bunch of artists, you know, on stage singing, da, da, da. And I think it was, I want to say it was Sting that walked past the mic and it fell. This nigga caught the fucking mic. Okay. I mean, his before that motherfucker dropped to the ground, how he know that mic was gonna drop? Does he probably listen? His 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 it's spider senses. senses. Not spider yo, senses. Yo, yo, Barney, I'm done. Barney, did you just say his spider senses? Word, because they they <laughs> other senses is like by, like times ten. So I'm he can saying. he can hear like a mug. Like he probably heard the mic fall. Oh, he probably you know, know what it is. Like, he probably, he probably heard the wind. He probably heard the wind from the mic. <laughs> Yo, Yo, look, one of our get, one of our um audience members, um Antonio, he's like he can see. And he said it's documented that that man, that man could see. It's just something about right, Antonio. Something about research, and that's all I'm saying. Y'all ain't gotta take our word for it, but research it on your own. I Antonio, Yo, Yo, Antonio, tag us in that link. I need to see that. Yo, Tell Antonio to tag that link. I, I need know, to see that. Antonio, tag the link, please. If you can get a hold of it. Did you see? Did you see? What if that nigga could see, I'm not going to listen to Ribbons in the Sky the same no more. I'm done. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like you cheated the whole time. I'm you losing all respect. Man. That's going to hurt my feelings. Like, yeah, That like, would really hurt me. Because I love Stevie Wonder. That would hurt. If he could I see. I love him too. But, but if I feel like, I really feel like think they're making all white chicks. I've been damn blue like too. Yo, we're not going to do that to Stevie, though. We're not going to do that to him. I'm, no. not that. <laughs> no. I'm, not, I'm not saying this is nothing like on some real shit. Like, y'all know, because oh, you know I research a lot. You know I read. I know, I know but we're not going to do that to Stevie. Listen. We did it to Michael Jackson and Prince. We're not going to do it to Stevie. We're not doing nothing to Stevie. All, listen, let me, I'm going to break it down. Since since we get a since we gonna go to <laughs> Let me break but, it down. But Jazz, but Jazz, Jazz, he said women in the sky, though, Jazz. Huh? He said women in the sky, though. We can't do that to him. Yo, yeah, women in the sky. Listen, there's, there's clouds in the sky, there's birds in the sky. What the fuck does that mean? Smoke goes in the sky. So what? So you telling me he saw the ribbon in the sky? He might have. He might fucking put nah. that ribbon up in the goddamn sky, is what I'm nah. saying. Nah, not Stevie. I don't think he can see, man. Yo, listen. I got faith in my man, listen, Stevie. Listen, listen. He blind, man. Yo, I probably shouldn't even say this. I know I stay saying stuff on this show. I probably shouldn't say it. But I'm going to say this at one point in time. And I was out there in the street and all that. And I was doing felonious things. I knew this crackhead named mm -hmm. Blind Man, right? I used to see Blind Man come in the building. You know what I'm saying? Do his one, two thing. He be like, I'll be right back. He go, he go to the next floor up. That nigga would smoke and come downstairs and be like, yo, you see that? Yo, 
used to bug me out. But I wow. was, did he be sitting there somewhere? Yeah. Yo, you ain't even peep that. You ain't see that. He Listen, might have been joking with you. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, he seen things that nobody else seen. But you know what though? I'm just my my, my third eye so open. He probably did see that. Who? And who, apparently, who, Stephen who, two eyes is open too. I mean, oh, he, no. see, he didn't see what he seen. <laughs> he didn't see. He said he he didn't say. Yo, you seen that physical thing that just moved past us? He said I just seen something. You Can see? I ask you a question? And this may be kind of off. A little off, but I've always thought in my mind, mm -hmm. though you can't see physically, do you still see dreams? You got to. That's what do I'm you still see? Like, do you, you still see eyes, visions in your head? Eyes. Like, when you close your eyes right now and you're thinking yourself playing ball, you could see yourself playing ball. Can a blind person actually still feel that same effect? Like, I'm no, trying, I just want to know. And, and just, just to speak on that, um, Oh, is it just, just speak on that. It's a young man named Lex, and he he's blind, and he's uh won gold medals in the the Olympics running track. And you know his slogan was, "You do not need eyesight to have a vision." True. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like okay. that hit me deep. Like yo, you really don't. You know what I mean? They have dreams. They have visions. Like he felt it in his body to jump over them hurdles when it was time to jump over them hurdles, and he could not mm -hmm. see. You know what I mean? So he had that vision. Like I want to. I want to run track. You know what I mean? And now he's a gold medalist, rich all around That's the world, right. giving his testimony. He probably learned. He probably learned how to time it. Like yo, every 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 thirty five steps, I'm gonna leap over this. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if he's blind. If he's blind, he had to study that track. Or yeah. they set their hurdles up to let them know at this certain point of jump, you will have to jump. Like, I don't think you, I don't I don't think if you just put him out there on a track and field that he's new to that he's never been on, he's gonna know when to jump over them hurdles. But one he can. Viewers, um, one of our viewers, uh, uh, Antonio said that was a very profound statement. Um, oh, yes. Queen oh, of the yes. South. That was very I mean, I totally agree with it. I mean, just because they can't see, I mean, they have brain activity. You know what I mean? They're not brain dead. They're not right. vegetables. You know what I mean? And they, like I said, he can jump them hurdles on a on a uh, unfamiliar track. That's why he got a gold medal. You know what I mean? Like they can hear, they can feel vibrations, they can That's sense right. things. You know what I right. mean? And it's, like I seen it, it's proof. You know what I mean? All like. I'm now, I'm gonna try. Matter of fact, I'm gonna try to hit this from a different angle now, right? Check it. Go ahead. You talk about Stevie Wonder and blindness, right? Y'all ever, mm -hmm. ever heard, y'all ever heard Blind, Blind Fury? That boy is nice. Now, as I be, now as but I know how he write his rhymes personally, though. I was about to say that. How I know somebody. I know somebody that know him personally. I know how he write his rhymes personally. How? How though? How? How can he have the like? He raps in detail. How? I'm gonna show you. Listen, it's, it's this thing. It's this thing where they said he. It's his keyboard that when he speaks, when he speaks, it, it, it shows on the screen, but it's repeating it back to him. This is how he's learning everything. It don't come out the way he's saying it, but if you learn, if you can hear every word that you just said. And also, when he when he like I don't I forgot what he said. It's something also when he's typing, his keyboard has braille on it. Yeah, and I know you know has braille on it. I know you're not lying because my best friend of 20 years, her sister is blind, and I and she used to live with her, and her my her sister used to have a keyboard exactly with what you're saying. It talks every everything they put yeah. into it. It repeats it to you. It has braille uh -huh. on it. Like, that computer is like the true. Yeah. Thing. And that's how that's how that's yeah. how he memorized all that. Because at first I thought the same thing. I was like, wait a minute. So how is he like? He's not freestyling. He know this should pitch the pitch on like uh uh. But then I actually being around a few people, they was like, no. Nah. He has a special keyboard that's braille on it, and it also repeats what he's writing. Wait, you never heard him sing? Oh nah. yeah, when he did the one hundred six and Park, the Chris he, Brown, he, he bodied that. He was mimicking Chris Brown. He and sounds, he sounded just like Chris Brown. It's crazy. Word. I, wonder, I 
put I gotta watch that. That's Yo, now this is my Rob point. Jerry to me, he is so underrated, and but I think it's because. He's, but why I think it's because he's blind. Right. People consider him handicapped. Exactly. Mm. Like. Don't see. I see. I was just going through that because I'm actually. Um, you know, what I mean, I really don't want to jump too much into it. Ninety, but you know, some people are doing some. Uh, some people are doing an indie movie. And it's all about indie. I'm supposed, to, so I'm supposed to be composing the rhymes for it, but the person that I'm composing the rhymes for is deaf. So mm. he's gonna have a female spitting the rhymes for him while he does it in sign language. So you know what I mean? You see, That's like dope. I'm in that situation right now. Or oh, when I write, he's gonna do in sign language, and the girl is gonna stand next to him and freestyle everything that he's saying. Yo, it's always a way around shit. Look at Fantastic. Yes. That, that damn not to be disrespectful, but not to be disrespectful, but look at Cat Williams and Little Tink Tink. If Little Tink Tink can hop his ass around with no legs, ain't right. nothing wrong with getting the fuck up and doing it with two. Right. Just like I said, like. Look at Fantasia. That bitch can't read not a goddamn lick, okay? Not a word, no, not one fucking word. Okay, and that bitch was out here writing goddamn songs. Well, I don't know if she was writing them herself per se, but you know, you know what the fuck she I had mean. the she had the <laughs> drumline syndrome. Right. She okay. had the drumline syndrome. She couldn't read, but she could sing her ass off. Right. Exactly. She know how to read now. Huh? I said she know how to read now. Right now she do, but when she first she started, she couldn't read shit. <laughs> Nothing. Not to be disrespectful, but she better not to read now. All that money she got, shit. Um, Word. can you come teach me how to read? She now nah, her ass learned how to read when that damn wife served her damn papers when she was cheating with dude, and they was getting ready to take oh, her man. damn money. She said, "Oh no, yeah. I got to read this shit. What the fuck? This is gonna <laughs> take my money." That's what her ass learned how to read, okay? Yeah. But look, so let's get so to... So what made weather going to learn how to read? Never. Nah, my mother's... <laughs> Never. He don't care. As long as he can count money, he don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't even know if he knows how to do that properly. With all the money he got, he don't even need to count it. He just know right. he got enough. Right. <laughs> It's a, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of them in the industry that got dyslexia and all types of shit. Mayweather know two things. Knock you out, spend money. Right. Yeah. When That's he it. ever knock somebody out? Huh? Okay. I never seen Mayweather knock nobody out. I seen him he, punch people a lot, but I never seen him knock nobody out. He did knock somebody out. It was a cheap way of doing it, but he knocked that Spanish dude out. Kodo? Oh, come on, man. Don't, don't, don't throw the Kodo on to me. <laughs> no, nah, the other Spanish kid. The <laughs> other Spanish kid that went to shake his hand. He the other Spanish kid, yeah, and he two peeps him. And then he still knocked him out. <laughs> All right, technically, you got it. He just <laughs> did it. He just did it the unprofessional way. He world starred him. That was a world star knockout. <laughs> No, you know what though? Not not you know, not to get off topic, but since we all Mayweather, okay, if he don't know how to read, how the hell he be knowing what 50 be saying to his ass on fucking Instagram? And uh, shit? His publisher, his friends, they all got Instagram, they all know no, 50. I'm just saying, yo, that like I'm not you know, not to say it like that, but how this nigga know what 50 be a petty if he can't fucking read? Like that nigga 50 so grimy. That nigga 50 so shady. He probably be reading it to the nigga. Yo, look what I said earlier. <laughs> Yo. Yo, look what I said earlier about you. This is what I said to you earlier, nigga. I was, I was, <laughs> I was That funny. sound like some, some 50 shit. Word. It do. I was, I was speaking of 50 cent, speaking of 50 cent, that was the bold mood you made, 50. Um, when you bought them 200 seats, but uh I don't think you realize, even though you made his concert look a little empty, he still got paid. Exactly. I don't rap, the, no. I don't no. rap no. in front of an wow. empty audience if you bought all them seats. Swap, but you gotta I still got paid. Right. You know, you know right. what? Understand, Swap, you got to understand the pettiness. I'll pay you to make you look like a bozo. But in really, reality, really, that's what he did. He didn't look like I a bozo. I told you to look stupid. Like, yo, I'll throw you, look, 
Like, yo, let me throw you a couple dollars, you bozo. <laughs> like, yo, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. not she, to be like that, then she didn't look she, like a bozo. It was be actually fun, 50 because this man still she. got paid. Now, if you, he really wanted to do that, you know I'm petty. So if you really wanted to do some petty shit, you should have bought the motherfucking seats and then had and then fucking canceled with the same people that you bought the tickets with. So nobody would have been in them seats. He still wouldn't have got no money. Nobody That's the petty shit. Damn. Nobody wasn't, nobody wasn't in those seats. No, nobody. That's the point. He still made his money either way. Nah, you know what I did? The tickets are probably non-refundable, but. Now, them chicken, at the end the of the tickets day, were fifteen dollars a piece. That makes it more petty, though. I listen. I got enough money. I can throw you a couple dollars just to laugh at you. You know what have been even more petty? You know what have been better? Because I already know what would have happened. I'd have just stood out front of his fucking um, concert with the with the G unit. I'd have just brought them together and just started spitting in the street right there. No, don't bring G unit because. <laughs> I would have everybody from the inside when it came outside, like what? I would have gave, yeah, like John Scott just made a good point. Right, tax write off. That was a good point. It's petty. It's it's petty. It's It's petty. petty. Yeah. But he should, even if he bought G Unit out there, ain't nobody gonna take them serious. Buck out here fucking trannies. We can't take Buck seriously. Fuck out of here! Are you serious? Me personally, I would have bought the tickets. I would have bought the tickets. I would have gave them out for free. I would have gave them out for free and told everybody, "Yo, yo, I'm gonna give you these tickets, but you gotta sit in your seats with with this G unit shirt on here. I'm giving out free G unit shirts." Yes. Yeah, in the whole front, two hundred seats. Oh, not that. a matter of fact, the shirt would have said, "This is 50. Wait, hold on, Jamal. Okay. Jamal here, but I'm gonna get with you after the show on that question, hon. But go ahead, y'all. But yeah, that's what I'd have did. I'd have had a, this is 50. Look. Yeah. yeah you had to perform knowing I did that. But yeah, Buck been getting, I've been out here getting Buck for, for, for years, yo. It's been wow. a couple of trannies that been bucking Buck. him. When that nigga was talking about Shorty want to ride with me, he was the fucking Shorty that was riding. Hey. He was talking about a bitch. He was talking about him. He was riding. Yo! Yo, yo, fuck a room. I don't know. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not gonna hold you. I don't know if you remember. Hold on. Oh, yo, Jazz. Yo, that ass Jazz, your show don't come with no water. We sitting here dry mouth and shit. Pass that water. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no, ain't no drinks on the show. I don't know if y'all remember, but if they, they, if G Unit did a little skit about about Ja Rule when he had the, the um. His fashion, his fashion coordinator, you know, Jeffrey Atkins. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, and then that's why DMX made that comment to him. He said, yeah, you laughed at me for being a crackhead, but you can come back from being a crackhead. You can stop, you can stop smoking crack. I'll still be a crackhead, but you can't come back from sucking dick. Like, how you do that? How you how you do that? Yo. Come back and say I'm a real nigga Free right now. DMX. Free DMX. Yeah, yo, nah, X is home. Oh, he home already? He home. sure is. Nah, yeah. You yeah. know, I know. You listen, know, I've been talking. I'm, I'm not going to let the cat out the bag too early. I'm not going to let the cat out the bag too early. Yeah. No, Next hold home. on. But, um, hold on. Do you know who I need to come home? And I miss him? Big L. Yeah. You know what? Listen. A alike, B alike, C alike. Because that's exactly I was going to say my boy. I, I, yo, Max B to me is a whole different breed of artist to me. He was a, yo, you cannot put him in the same category with anybody. But look at it, all these artists are all trying to be Max B now. Everybody trying to, everybody trying to rap sing, but they still can't find. They, they still no, with his way. They can't find that. They can't find where he had. He started that singing shit on these on on the bars. Now, when I tell people that, they be like, Nah, niggas was doing that already. No, niggas had R and B singers uh-huh. with them. But they wasn't doing it themselves. Talk that shit, BX. Talk that. Come on, shit, you know? come on. Max B started that. I'm gonna roll me a dub. Right okay. a dub, dub. What? Come on, man. Right. Yo, free Max B, man. My man Max B can do a song. Yo, no disrespect to the homie Jim, but he made a song about 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 uh about uh her touching it in Miami though. 
and ma- and it was a hit. Everybody was in the hood singing it. See, see listen, you talking about Chrissy? Yeah, Chrissy touched in Miami, but listen, yeah, that's, listen that. that's that's the thing I see, and that's another thing. Like some of these, you know, I know I'm I'm in with the whole love and hip hop shit. I love it. I ain't gonna front. I like the whole ratchet shit of it. However. When Max I did made, not hold on, Max made Love and Hip Hop famous too because he started all our drama and was with all the shits before they started right. it and, beca- and yeah. TV. Right. Yeah. And to be honest with you, Chrissy wasn't even no, Chrissy was a nobody. Chrissy was known in the hood <laughs> for fucking and sucking for handbags. That's what she was known in the hood for. Oh, this used to fuck oh, with her Mike. neck was twerking for this that broken. This she used to fuck with Mike Tyson. She used to fuck. Who did she fuck with? Who did yeah. she fuck with? Yeah, I remember the interview. Cam, Cam was like, come and on. And then Jim Jones cuffed that. You I know mean, what? The more, that's a good point. Nate Dogg did open the lane for all that. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Nate Dogg. Yeah. Rest in peace, Nate Dogg. Yeah. God, no. See what? But Nate Dogg, see, but think about it. Listen, he opened the door for it. I love Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg was the truth. He opened the door for it, but the he didn't rap. He ain't rap. He was the hook master. Right. When Max B came onto the scene, he made it possible for you to sing off key with the bars. <laughs> he made it right for you. Uh-huh. And I wish I never met her at all. He made it okay <laughs> for that. He made it okay for that. That's right. why I say Max B to me. When people say, who's your top five? I put Max B in ball with that because you got to. Dip set, Jim Jones, all that shit would not have this swag it did if Max B did not come and sprinkle a little of that, that song on it. Now, you okay? Know, not that song, though. You can't say that. You, can not say that. you know why? Jim and them was wavy. They had the streets and all that before, before Big. They, they was wavy. Big okay, was they was wavy. No, no, no. But Big Max B no, 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 came no, no, no. through backspinning on a surfboard them. on them. No, Bigger Vell made them wavy. That he made them wavy. That's they what was, I'm saying. They was lit, but he made them wavy. Listen, I, that's what I said. That's what I said. Dip set it was dip set, dip set. When Max came through, they was dip set. And like it was Max came through on a surfboard, leaning on it like this, like yo, yo, why this wave? Yo, I'm gonna keep Come it a buck. On. I'm gonna keep it a buck. It's gonna sound like how it's gonna sound to whoever. Max B made it, Max B. Made it cool for tough niggas to say, ow. Word. Facts. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and it was okay. wavy. Like, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he wavy. You know what I mean? He made it okay for niggas to throw them big shades on. Right. Yeah. What yeah. happened? Yeah. With your hair looking like Blanca from, from Street Fighter. Yeah, he made it okay to have your braids yeah. out. Like, what? I fucking hate you, yo. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Big ass BT that, Simons. Big ass BT Simons. Buckle like, down. to me. To me, Dipset was the the Stacey Adams. Max B was the Giuseppe's. You okay. know what I mean? It, it, it was it was like a ah, put these low. He is like what Kiss now, said. He that took away from put the low flips on. Take it from Killer though. Killer always been a wavy nigga though. Who? Killer. Yeah. I, yeah. Killer, so, to, Killer provided. So, Killer provided. He prov- he he provided the movement. He he was the one. He was doing the horse and carriage shit. That's why I said. That's why I said. He was at the beach. He was the hot dog stand man. So Max love, B love. was the Max B was the like yo. Let me get fifty hot dogs for my niggas. Like you know what I mean. Like to so me, love, Max B was it. really because this is kind of tying into what <clears throat> the topic of the night is. So let's kind of like tie that all in together. Okay. Let's okay. go. You know the topic of the night is has hip hop. You know, lost the art of lyricism. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, almost. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no, no. That's why we, let's start with. Let's go down. Let's go from this way. Let's start with the Queen of the South. Let's start with right. her. What do you think, Miss Vaughn? Definitely. Definitely. Um, as far as people in the industry, um, because as far as independent artists, we definitely still have our our lyricism going on. But nowadays, I feel like. Um, it's all about the image and, and what 
you know, if the beat make you bounce or not, it's not about the lyrics and what they saying. Half of the artists out, you can't understand what they're saying. And you literally have to Google their lyrics to actually get what they're saying. So lyricism is gone in the industry, in my opinion. I hate, I, some people gonna be mad about that, but real lyrics telling a story, not just rapping, not just rhyming to a beat. I mean, lyrics, a story. You know what I mean? Vocabulary, dropping knowledge. No, that, that's not out in the industry right now. Now, as far as the underground and the independent artists, yes, the, the lyricist is coming out. Right. We're coming out. We're coming back. <laughs> Damn, so, buddy. Get out of my head. Swagger, what you think? <laughs> Get out my head. Um, everything has its place in music. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Lyrics is going out of style, but you know, uh, the the whole game has always been defined by its youth, and because the youth are more leaning towards mumble rap, and these sing these singing rappers that that they, they do a whole bunch of y'all that way, school school, they do a lot of that when they rap. So, um, that's starting to phase this way in, which I understand, but. Lyricists uh, have always been there. They always going to be there, and, they, and they're always going to be the ones that show the longevity. It's only a few of them catchy ones that's going to stick around because it's just a, it's it's just a fad. It's just it's it's, it's just for now. It's a now thing. It's a oh yeah, that's cool right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, five years, two years, I'm not even going to be doing that no more. Like remember, remember they was not laughy taffy. I never was with none of that. I was like, nah, that's that's not wavy. I can't so, do that. So you want snapping your fingers right. and leaning a little bit, ah. just a little to the left and a little to the right? Ah. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't get into that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, now mind you, you gotta understand that I'm even though I'm from the Bronx, a lot of people try to a lot of people try to put me into the stereotype of oh you you listen to Nas and Jay-Z. Nah, I don't only listen to Nas and Jay Z. Like I, I listen to a lot of Master P coming up too. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of True. I listen to a lot of uh, uh Silk the Shocker. I listen yeah. to uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah. I, I was all over. I was all over music wise. Whatever was catching my ear at the moment I was like, right. Oh, let me let me listen to that. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. I'm a few dudes I know in my circle who, who really was bumping Easy E like that. Mm -hmm. like I throwing some some easy easy. They like, oh, that's corny. Don't man, turn that shit off. Throw this red man shit on. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I'm in the red man too. He dope. But let me let me but let me throw let me throw some red man up real quick. Let me let me throw in like water for chocolate. Right. Yeah, we bust let me bust down the head with this classic. Who? Like, well, that's hard. But it's not. As Hold hard on. As like, so Barry Irvin says, what you know? He said, um, what's your view on R and B music today? I feel like it's not the same like it was '99 and early 2000. Because now it's all about I want to I want to hit it right now. Oh, right. Me, me it's, it's all up in you. I, I think it's R and B. It's no I more. It's, it's nothing. You know, it's, you don't leave anybody anything to imagine about. I agree. Anymore. I mean, there's nothing to imagine. It's all about. boom right there. Um, hit you. Boom. Hit it has, I mean, if you. I agree with you, Swagger. I do. Um, with your whole point. Uh, there is a time, there is a place, you know, things do change over a course of time. However, um, as far as, you know, this new stuff that's coming out, I really don't think that a lot of people are taking the culture of it seriously anymore. I think they are just, you know, hey, I put a few rhymes together. I got a hot beat. Here it is. I really don't think they're taking it that serious anymore. Look at Six Nine. Six Nine don't take a lot of his shit fucking serious. That nigga puts a bunch of Seriously. bullshit together and then on a hot beat and these motherfuckers eat it up. But what was your can you repeat yeah. the question for me? I want to make sure I answer it. Right. Um, the topic was has um hip hop lost the art of lyricism? I'm going with I'm going with what Bonnie said. And the only reason why I'm I'm piggybacking with, with that is fact is the only bars that I hear now, the only lyrics or any kind of lyricism that I hear now is from people like that's not on. Like mm -hmm. battle, me personally, battle rappers got more lyricism now than anything. Yeah. Um, what's this white? Not even not even 
because he white. But what's his white kid name? To me, he's a monster. Who's what's his name? Now? Catastrophic. Who? Who's Catastrophic. That? Is that his name? Mm -hmm. Never heard of him. But see, it's, now I don't. I don't just. I, I mean, like. But now, hold on. Let me just finish. In the industry, I'm sorry. Me personally. <laughs> It's not hip hop to me no more. Hip hop to me is rock him. Carol, that's hip hop. This right now is R and P rhythm and pop. This is what this is what this is, rhythm and pop. Explain that's how I look at it. Explain Kendrick. Kendrick Samar to me. Lyricist. It's always somebody nah, like you opinion. that that put, it's always somebody like you that catch me out there. Yes, you got J. Cole. Yes, you got Kendrick Lamar. Yes, nah, you but, got um, J. Sean. Nah, like, you got Joey Badass. You do. You do. But hip -hop, for me, that's hip-hop. Like, that's but it hip -hop. don't outweigh snapping pop. That's hip-hop. You know what I mean? It don't outweigh the snapping pop. We do have a few, but. But can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar is hip hop. Kendrick Lamar does have his star. He does have his stripes. But you, do you think Kendrick, like, if he went and said, "You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the green," and he did some shit like six nine. Think about it. Mm -hmm. He's I not. He's not. Question. Kendrick Lamar is nice, but right now, even though he is where he at. No, there's not. He's underrated. There's not too many people speaking his name the same way they speak in six nine name. Right. Album of the year. Hold on, let me check it. Listen. Yeah, of course. Okay, he got it. J Cole got album. He had best album too with no features. And it went like what double platinum with no features. He killed it. But these guys, even though we consider them hip, they're not recognized like the way they should be you know in the why? industry. Because you're hearing the media. You're hearing it from the media. This. That they caters to the younger crowd. I'm gonna tell you somebody right now that for years they've been trying to really right. get in, but I feel like they were scared to let that man in because I think that nigga boss was so fucking superb. It was like, oh, did you hear what he? He's one of the many people that made me make that face like, mm, did you fucking hear what he said? <laughs> Ransom. Ransom. Come on. Ransom. Yeah. Ransom to me. Ransom to me was the rawest. He was like an old, dirty bastard, fucking dies of. Uh, to me, he was everybody in one. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Good. So then, would you? Would you? This is just a I'm, one of my best freestyles I ever heard in my whole life is Stack Bundles. Huh. Stack I'm bundles. never, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna forget stack bundles. I love me some stack, yo. I do. Man, you know what? Let's take it, let's take it, let's take it to some more. You want to use stack bundles? Chinks drugs. Chinks is yeah. dope. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was beyond dope. He was the he. That, that nigga was one of the leads. Nah, listen, he, listen, was listen, one, he was one of the leads. <laughs> but he wasn't stack. Stack gave you every aspect. Yeah. Stack to me, honestly speaking, stack to me and, and Max B. Stack, stack, Stacks B. Um, stacks, we got to be Max B <laughs> and, and, and Stacks bundles to me should have never been in that situation. No, I agree. I felt that it was in the right situation. Wait, hold on, guys. I agree. Kimberly, um, two tone, one of the viewers, she just said, and Papoose. I agree. Yeah. Papoose is underrated as well. Very oh, underrated. Who said that? Um, your, your sister, I, I Kimberly. She said oh, Papoose is very underrated. <laughs> but yeah. you know why Papoose? I feel like Ludacris is underrated. <laughs> you know why Papoose is not way Papoose is woke. You're not gonna let somebody with that kind of mind capacity in them doors. True. They're not gonna let Pat Poos walk with the mind frame because, that he got because he started he started tramping on the wrong toes. Yeah, right. You can't ruffle certain feathers. He's he's true. he's a problem true. for them. He is a problem, and that's yeah. why he has not he reached got, a certain level. Bonnie, of who else you said, Bonnie? Obama, when you got Michelle Obama, tweeting, when you got Michelle Obama tweeting your name and using ludicrous. Ludicrous. 
Oh my God. Ludacris and me, I'm gonna tell you what Ludacris was to me. Ludacris was on a whole different level. You couldn't mimic him. Rank. You couldn't copy him. To me, yes, he very, very, and I believe that Ludacris should be in the Hall of Fame. He took it. He took it. I don't gonna know. I, I loved all his shit. I'm not gonna lie. Look, I'm most gonna lie. deaf, most deaf, y'all left him out. Most exactly, most deaf. Yo, yeah. yo, most deaf. Um, common, common sense. Um, Talib Kwan Lee. These were all lyric. These were all lyricists. Hold on. Um, Temple of Hip Hop says Styles P. Facts. Of course. Of course. Of course. But you got artists out like that right now that's going that, 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 that when they finish transitioning, they're going to be in the same places that we put all the people we just named. You got Don Q. You got Dave East. You got Hold Freddie on. Barry Irvin said, what about Hell Rail, Jada Kiss? What about them? I can't put hell out in that category. I'm sorry. <laughs> yo, you took the words. Yo, no bullshit. Yo, yo, no bullshit. Yo, swagger. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was like, nah. Hell, nah. Well, hell, well, hell nice. well is nice. Hell well is He's nice, but nah. <laughs> and not even with, and I'm not even speaking about his the, the latest misfortune and events and stuff that's been happening to him. Beyond that. He lost his he he lost his, his stripes flag a long time ago. Thank thank you, Thaddeus. Cuzzo, how we gonna forget about Cuzzo Ti? How we gonna That's forget about him? Yo, That's yo, Ti, and this ain't no Ben rag wagon shit, no riding up. Ti to me will be and always remain the motherfucker that changed the 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 way you spit bars in the South. I'm sorry, yo, he came with. It's yo, like if he took New York. Yo. It's Stay like T.I. It's like if T.I. was raised in New York and then went to the South and just like, you know what? I'm going to put New York in the South in a pot and I'm going to mix that. I'm going to drink that. I'm going to see. I'm sorry. The way he spit was a, is different to me. Like, I hear a lot of trap music. I hear a lot of that South shit. But to me, when I heard T.I., it was like if I was raised in the South and he was like the Jay-Z to me. Or if he was like the... So I'm sorry, T.I. is nice. That dude, you can't take nothing from him. So I've never heard nothing whack from him. But I got to keep it real. Listen, it's funny real. you say that. It's funny what you just... That comment you made about if he was raised in New York, da da da, da. So, boom. This is a... You're going to hear it first here. For me and my co-host Swagger Don, my cousin. Not many, you know, to the viewers, a lot of y'all don't know that is my cousin. Okay, we family. So y'all gonna hear it here first tonight. It's funny you said that, Biet, because he is from New York. He's born and raised. We and I'm gonna tell you that's facts. And the reason why I say that's facts because that is our family. That is family to us. That is our cousin. He was raised. He was, you know, as a little child, he was born and kind of raised in New York. And then, you know, down the line, he, you know, his mom, well, his grandparents raised him down South. You know why you That's can why say that? that you know why I say that? Because I'm sorry, but Tia's the only one in me that had a different kind of country swag. He didn't have the kind of, he didn't have a country swag. It was like more like a, like he, it was more like a, a smooth kind of kind. Like it was different because I, I, I used to be in, I used to live in North Carolina in Muffinsbury, and I've seen oh. some of them hood dudes. The swag is not the same. I got family that live in Atlanta. They, they country swag is totally. It was like he had an extra something in it. Like dog, I, I came here with this, and I, I just picked it up. Some of y'all shit. You know what I'm saying? So when I hear him rap, you can actually hear it in his lyrics. You, be, you'll hear Ti and be like, yo, bring that back. You already just said, yo, my son just went through that the other day. You all the way in fucking the Bronx. You in the Bronx. Yo, my son just did that shit. Damn. Yeah. It's some cunt, it's some South music I hear I can't relate to. I don't know what it is sitting on the hood of um 64 wood grain sitting on Deuce Falls. I, ne I never sat on a car or rims that big. I don't know what it is to trap in front of the, a house in front of a yard and your, and your store is like two miles away. When you hear Tia, it's like... Man, what you what you just left out of? What you just left him out of New York, nigga? <laughs> Only thing different is that he wore them big ass shorts. That's it. That's yeah, it. So it's Antonio good. said all the way room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Antonio yeah. said Outcast changed the game for the South. What y'all feel about that? That's a whole fact. That's a whole fact. 
Thank they you, Antonio, just, for pointing that out. Shout they out. Didn't, to they, didn't just, they didn't just change the game. Them niggas wrote a whole different manual. When I heard that Alien song from Andre 3000, I was like, Negro? Look, what did you hold just on. do? Hold that thought. I'm going to read out all these names real quick because they are going wild in the comments. So they're saying Big Boy is underrated. They are saying also don't forget about 8-Ball, MJG, UKG, Ghetto Boys. Um, who else? David Banner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. David Banner. Shout out to David Banner. Yeah, Mr. He, yo, David Banner woke like a motherfucker, yo. That's a woke ass nigga right there for you. Like, shout out to him. And he ain't scared either. Ain't, ain't not scared one either. Bit. Yo, he, he said the realest, either. Yo, he said the realest shit I ever heard another rapper say about about you know everybody talking about um you know when Big say you know the rules uh move from BK to New Jerusalem. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had to leave the hood, nigga. David Banner said, "Yo, where I'm from." You can't come back to the hood with fronts in your mouth. They'll rip, they'll rip your teeth Oh, off. yeah. Oh, yeah. That is well, punch. You know, you can't come in the building. You ain't coming in the hood. I said, man, that's real. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. Right. Oh, that is. They already know. Pun. Listen. Legend. We, we, yo, we, yo, let, let, let me tell you something. From our hood, okay, Castle Hill, that's right around, that's like five minutes from me. We know fun is the truth. We know that. Like, that's inevitable for him to be up in that list. But shout out, but also too, and not just because, not because just Varney on here, but I was out there in North Carolina for like a month. And they, and they definitely got some, um, they really definitely got some real boys out there. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. When I heard, they definitely, when I heard they definitely got some real shooters out there. They do. I was when like, I heard niggas, that song. nigga sitting in a beach chair with the Mac on your lap like it ain't nothing. Like, right. But when bro, I heard Bonnie, yo, Bonnie shit. shit, yo, I was, I had to really like sit back like, yo, Shorty's fucking dope. Like, yo, she's fucking dope. Like, and, I was so like, oh, yeah. And so laid back on some real, like, yeah. Right. Like, oh, she, yo. If y'all don't know her, like she real fucking humble, like Back. Uh, oh, they see it right now. They you know see it. they like yo, she's not really saying much of anything, but she's definitely on point. Word. You know what? This is a good one too. And Thank Kim, I agree with you. <laughs> Little mama is underrated. I will go, I will say that. She is underrated. I I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I would have mentioned her in the I beginning. Would say her. In the beginning, but after all that, after all that shit, she them bars she been coming out with lately. Them free, I, 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 I changed her last my mind. She just put out. Did you hear? I had changed my time? mind. I was like, oh shit, she got bars. Like yeah. when is what me was when she did that um that panda that panda uh remake. That's what got me with them when I finally heard some actual bars instead of lip gloss popping. Yes, right. She under she it right now. Right now. Back then, nah, she didn't have no bars, but right now, yeah, she is very underrated right now. But I feel like she blackballed, but she got blackballed because um speaking of Kim, she got blackballed because she hopped on the stage with Hope. It was like I, I mean, that was just like a bad Right. She fucked her. Oh, oh excuse my French. She oh, missed God. her whole Christmas. Oh, yeah. I don't think nobody else. I don't think nobody else would have took it that way. But just because it was fucking Hovind, and he is who we think he is, that's what that you was. Know, about. Yo, right. Oh, you don't do that, yo. But come on. So let me ask you a question. So let me ask you a question. Why when Kanye West did it to this chick, they didn't blackball him? Did it to who? He did it to Taylor Swift. Yeah, Taylor Swift. Why did they blackball Kanye? Why did Kanye step on the stage before? Feel like she stepped on the stage with Hov. She wasn't even respected enough back then. She overstepped her boundaries with that one. Yeah, right. she hopped on the stage and tried to perform with him. Like you don't do that. Why you do that? Yeah, that, it was kind of a disrespectful you know, thing. Even though I get where she was coming from, you know, she was, you know, because at the time they were performing New York that shit, and you know, it was love. But yeah, yeah, she's this out there like, damn, this is where I'm from. I get that. Out of respect, out of respect, so that yo, was fucked up. Oh, say yo, she clown chasing. Get her out of here. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question, yo. <laughs> Let me ask y'all a question. If you go back and look at that, jump off topic. Tried to save her. 
Beyonce was like, nah, baby, don't do it. He gonna fuck up your career. Like, she tried to save her. Yeah. But her little mama was like, nah, fuck that. I'm up here. And this is the result of what happened now. You black girl. Yeah. She so probably, me question. probably had to, felt like she had to, you know, had the right to be up there. This is where I'm from, but it backfired on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy day. Let me ask you a question. Not to jump off topic. For little mama? Huh? huh? Yeah, so long she she popped on Jay Z for little mama. That was her people's. I don't know if that was it. I don't know I what heard. that was about. Well, this is what I heard from doing like a little digging and digging and digging. From what I pieced together, they at the party they was at. I guess. Um, I think it was. Yeah, oh yeah, because he kicked little mama out. That's yeah. It, they said he kicked little mama little out the party. And that Beyonce was mad because Jay was flirting with him, and that Solange kind of got at him in the fucking elevator about it. And I don't know. To me, to be honest with you, I think like the shit was put together. Them, them motherfuckers is real smart. Real fucking smart. They take fake relationship problems and make a fucking album and songs about it and we eat it the fuck up. Just drinking all that damn lemonade. Word. Bitches is not going to get lemonade <laughs> braids. They can, they going through problems. Some of these bitches don't even have a man to be going problems with, but they, they blind Beyonce shit talking about some. If I had a day, like, nah, bitch, you ain't going through no Beyonce problems. Like, none of us are going through that shit. They smart, y'all. I'm just I'm they busy, though. Yo. <laughs> All right, man. I'm trying to tell you, they are. Okay, they use that whole 4 4 album, even though he was enlightening his people on it. That it was really a fucking apology to Beyonce's fucking beehive. I, I respect it though. He had to do it. Yeah, of course mm, I respect yeah, that it, but that's it what grown. it was for. It was grown. It was like, yeah, yeah, you know what? I messed up, and this is what I do best. This is how I speak to people best. Yo, let me ask you a question. That beehive shit, didn't little Kim have that back in the days? <laughs> I just thought about that. I was like, wait a minute. Where have I heard that before? <gasps> Didn't, didn't Little Kim start that back in the day? Beehive? The Beehive? Because I remember, because I definitely remember her doing a track with some dudes on it that I had never heard before, and she had introduced them as the Beehive. And, um, and um, Nicki Minaj used to look like Squidward. But we're not going to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, all the way Squidward. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember you. Huh? <laughs> my little blocky in Queen, in Queens and all that. I remember when Finn, I remember when you, you pulled up with Fendi. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, all the way, she, had the done, no, she had the long no suit. She was like Scotty Pippen back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> it was like looking at it was like looking at a non-athletic uh, Scotty Pippen. Yo, the barbs yeah. are ready to come back to your ass, nigga. The barbs is coming for you, swag. The niggas you gonna have to come. <laughs> Fuck it. Yo, I'm done, yo. Oh my yeah. god. So you said she was flipping Krabby Patties back in the day, that's what you said? <laughs> like she was. Like she owned the joint. You know what I'm talking about? Yo. I'm just saying. I was watching Barbershop oh, the other day man. and I couldn't even believe because you know I don't really be looking at her. You know what I'm saying? Or looking for her in the media and all that. But I see her. And I was like, because I don't really watch music videos and none of that no more. I, I, I feel all that saturated. They they just they put all those images there for you to for you to start lusting over them images. And I, I ain't with it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, 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 I bet I still watch music videos. Yo, you know what's crazy? I don't even listen. If you ask me what's the latest hot song right now, I couldn't tell you. The last hottest song? Mine. <laughs> I don't listen to radio. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't let, yo. If I, the only way I know something is popping right now from the little clips I see on Instagram. Yo, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> yo, all year, all this, I've been, I stopped writing music this year. Well, I, I didn't stop writing music. I stopped putting music out this year. Mm -hmm. I, I was focusing only on battles. So, I really only listened to my battle verses. I'm always I'm always in battle mode, always always writing for my next battle. So, and I, I record my I record my rounds and I listen to them. Yeah, and I, 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 I listen to your craft. 
I mean, like yeah. I literally don't listen to nobody else unless it's somebody from my team, and we and, and I'm and I'm trying to put together a project, so I'm listening to all the sounds, seeing what I'm gonna put together. Okay. Uh huh. Right. So look, let's, let's, we got me and Swag got some questions for y'all. That's a fact. Okay. So we going, of course, ladies first. <laughs> Facts. We start off. This is the first question for both of y'all. Um, musically. What and who were your biggest influences, Bonnie? Oh man, honestly, my dad. My dad was a musician. Um, I'm a daddy girl, and he was a musician, and he was in a band actually back in the day. And uh, a lot of things business wise went wrong with his career, and I just, you know. I felt like, you know, the knowledge that he gave me, I can take now and, and go on and do my own thing. Um, I'm inspired by my life experiences. I'm inspired by single mothers raising kids by themselves. I'm inspired by um, black men, you know what I mean, uh, lifting other black men up instead of shooting them. I'm inspired by uh, a melting pot of colors coming together to unify. You know what I mean? I'm inspired by the world. I oh, know that's right. BX? Yeah. Who Me? Would you, yeah, who you, would you who would you say musically? I'm not going to I I know the question. I'm not <laughs> oh, going to say man. musically, my bad. I'm okay. not going to say my poor I'm not going to say because I, I I already had it on the tip of my tongue because you 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 and Vani already have an idea of my thoughts on that. I'm not going to say we much. Do, but we've already, I'm just we've already, far. My we've, bad. We've already my had, bad. But after listening to y'all and after taking in the knowledge that y'all had and letting it soak into my brain, I'm not going to sit here and say nothing inspired me to do this. Being broke inspired me to. I'm not going to say that because at the end of the day, if not hearing music, not hearing what they was doing, then I wouldn't have knew what rap was. So I had to hear something. I had to hear somebody that intrigued me to want to do that. And my times of listening to music, people would sit here and look at me and be like, yo, you was around with the, with the cat. No. I really didn't start listening to music until like the early 90s. So it was like the Wu-Tang Clan. It was like the Red Nets. It was like the Daz of Fangs. Bump, skibbity, bump. It was those. It was Nas, Illmatic. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was, nice. it, you know, it, it was things like that. So now that I thought about it, what inspired me to really do it was really listening to something like, oh, shit, I can do that. Look at that. And back then, what we look at now is, ah, uh, that's whack, that's old. Back then, those little Acuras, them 5.0s were hot. So now that I think of it, if I didn't see those rappers in those videos on Yo! MTV Raps, you know, the basement and all that, if I didn't see that, I would have never had that either. So I'm going to say there's no one particular artist that inspired right. me. It was music, period. That's what's and, the knowing that what, and knowing what that what it could do for me and what I was hearing was basically, yeah, my fucking mother was a dope fiend. My mother was a dope fiend. You know, out there with the car heart, the 40 belows. I had the little car heart, and I had the 40 belows. You know what I mean? Music back then, I related to. I had to really think, like, what, like, why did music touch me? Let me think about that. Have I become so cocky in the way I've spit bars that I forgot about what drove me to the culture? Was it not watching Beat Street? Was it not watching Remo die? You know what I'm saying? Was it not watching the graffiti, the break dancing? Was it not Curtis hearing Curtis, Curtis Blow rapping? Like, oh shit, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? So I got to think about it. Like, yes, that is music yeah. inspired. There's no one person. You have a person say that a thousand people did that. Nah, I just fell in love with it because of what I heard. Facts. So look, the next question I got for y'all is, <clears throat> we're going to start with Vani again. Um, what do you think of hip hop, the hip hop scene in your area? Well, I'm from uh, North Carolina. Well, I reside in North Carolina. I was born in East Orange, but I'm from the South. I love being from the South. Um, as far as North Carolina, um, music wise, 
it's certain cities that's that's you know jumping off like Charlotte and things like that. But mm-hmm. other than that, um, there's a limited amount of opportunities and artists um, in NC besides independent artists. And there's no unification, in my opinion, when you know everybody out for themselves. But if we was to all come together, we would all be rich instead of everybody being broke. You know what I mean? So in North Carolina, I don't see the opportunities. All of my fan base. Is from out of state. You know, <laughs> all of my shows besides Charlotte, North Carolina, is out of state. You know what I mean? So I don't know. North Carolina need to step it up. I think all we had was J. Cole and uh I forgot somebody else, but Petey. Nobody out of North Carolina to be honest. Pablo. Oh yeah, Petey Pablo. Um it was one more person, but well, I don't know whoever that was. Look at all the battle rappers I got coming from your area that be putting music out as well. Like I never hear anybody to come out of North Carolina mention anybody like Riz Rothstein, T Top. Because they're not going to. They're not going to. Green 910. You like, know why? They, why they, they, surround, they don't want to be surrounded by. by they surrounded they by New York else. boys. No, it's not that. Also, no, real shit. it's not. No, on some real shit. I'm, you know, I'm born and raised Bronx, New York. But I, you know, I moved down here as an adult, and to be honest with you, it's not because of anything like New York related. Really? No, no, I- no, no, no. I don't mean like that. I mean as far as look who he, when he on stage, look who his team is around him. He may yeah. get like one or two people from his city, but mostly the people around him is from New York. So it ain't like. Like I'm saying, because he got the New York dudes, he's not doing that. It's like his environment. The people, like if right now, if I'm not from North Carolina, let's say I'm born and raised from North Carolina, but I moved to the Bronx, the people I fuck with now is who I'm going to have around me. So I don't think he's purposely not mentioning nobody from North Carolina, but I think it's just more or less like he's spitting. I'm constantly practicing with these dudes. This is my team. This is who I'm around. So this is well, what it is. It's not, it's not just that as well. It's more, and I think Ronnie was trying to say it as well. It's kind of a... I, I, I know people want to try to feel some type of way about it, but I don't give a fuck. I don't sugarcoat shit. Speak your mind. It's a, lot of fucking, it's a lot of hate. A lot of hating around here. Hard. Really, lots of shit. I know there's lots hate of shit everywhere. Shit. You know, hating appears everywhere, every city, every state. But here, they got like a yeah. very closed minded crabs in a bucket type of thing. They a lot of people don't want to see other people doing good. And they and when they see you doing good, they don't want to give you that congratulations. Period. That's, That's what it is. Yeah, and the thing about it is if it's no um not that many outlets in the South. Like up um in New York, you can just walk to the corner store. Right. That's a three mile ride for us to get to the store. You know what right. I mean? There's no no um recreational activities for the kids. There's nobody trying to build up the community. All they do is down the city. And I'm, I'm referencing Whoa. Johnson County, Selma and C. So right. let's just shout out Joko. But but Joko, Hello. y'all need Hello. to do better. Like everybody can sit around and be like, oh, this went wrong and that went wrong. But nobody's but coming no. together to, oh, well, let's right. get a community center for the kids to go to so they don't have to be out here gang banging or selling dope. Let me give you right. a, let me a give lot you a of people in talking okay. For talent around here, the youth that you know, the youth MCs, you know what I mean. Let them know. Let them get on stage and experience what what the adults trying to experience for free, nonprofit, give back. You know what I mean. Like fact, nothing like that it. is around here. I'm gonna keep it all the way live with you. Like I said, you know I don't sugarcoat shit. I don't really give a fuck what nobody say. But this is what it is to piggyback off of what Vonnie said. She's absolutely right when they don't, you know, it's a lot of people bumping their gums and talking that good shit, but a lot of people not putting that fucking mouth work to action. Like you can sit up here all day nope. and talk that shit all you fucking want, but let's see some action. Give these kids an outlet. A lot of, you know how many kids right. out here got fucking talent? You know what I'm saying? A lot of singers, a lot of singers here. There's a so, lot of fucking rappers here. Nobody is really giving them any opportunity. Now, Right. But just let me say this real quick. I understand what you said, because in my hood, to answer your question, in my hood, it's like, there's some dudes doing their thing. I'm not even going to sit here in front. You got my man, Don Pusher, who shoot videos. He definitely do videos for a couple of the dudes around local. But as far as unity, like Barney said, nah. 
I believe the same thing. That if dudes would, with all this talent in my hood, if dudes were to really, 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 like, it'd be crazy. Listen, listen. But, but what you said as far as the youth, I got this young kid for the last six, seven months. Every time he see me, y'all want to battle you. Yo, stop playing, man. Go ahead. I never knew why. I thought he was joking. See, but I made something out of it because now I seen a young kid the other night. He was like, yo, I really want to battle you. And I'm like, yo, stop playing. Why you want to battle me? He was like, because everybody telling me in the hood, you you one of the nicest. I don't want to go to, to them dudes. I want you new over here. What you got? So I was like, dude, listen, they don't make sense to be just sitting here spitting in the street. Let's make this something. We got a whole basketball court in front of my building. Get your man to get a camera. I got man with a camera. You'll sit here and play basketball, old timer versus the the young timers on the back. Let's do a let's do battles like that. Let's see. Let's put that on camera. Let's show him before every battle. We have a speech from one of the young dudes. This is why I want to battle the old timer. Not because I hate him. Not because I got any animosity before him. Because by doing this, I'm gonna learn from him. He's older right. than me. This is why I want to battle the young dude. He's young. He in his prime. He going to keep me on my toes. He a young cub. This shows me that if I could get his attention that enough to stand for nine to ten minutes with me in a circle away from all the negativity that's going on, I made a change. I did something. Look, at like, look put it like this. We got promoters down here, right? We got these promoters down here. They began a lot of shine. Doing all these parties, putting all these great things together for adults, charging folks, you know, for unnecessary shit sometimes. Uh, however, why don't y'all take that same energy and do something for the youth? What about the youth that likes to sing? What about the youth that likes to perform? Why don't y'all put something together for them? Or, the less, or not even just the youth. How about the less fortunate people you know, they can't afford to go in the studio and do all of that. It's like, you know, you know, what's crazy? you know what amazed me today? I'm not even gonna lie to you. I went, I went to the store earlier by myself. I seen some young dudes giving out turkeys. Mm -hmm. That was the most amazing thing I've seen. Like they were, it wasn't no adults there. It wasn't no, it was like, they just thought in their mind to come together. I'm like, yo, let's give out some. So I was just sitting there looking at them like, like, oh, wow. And these are Let me give y'all an example. Go back to what we were saying about the poor and the youth and all that. Perfect mm -hmm. example, North Carolina. Um, my father does a nonprofit organization to give back to the community. Every year we host an event where we uh, sell plates, nonprofit. We take all the profit, go buy school supplies, fill up book bags, and give out school supplies to children around here that don't have no school supplies or less fortunate. Now, mm -hmm. I went live, okay? I went live on this event, it's, you know, letting everybody know, we're going live, come get your plates, we supporting the youth, da 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 I think I got, like, probably 100 views, you know what I'm saying? But if I post a video with somebody getting beat up at Walmart or in the middle of the street or shaking a, you know, shaking a rump shakers, then I get a million views, it'll go viral. Yep. But come, when it comes to doing something for somebody else, it, that, I'm telling you, man, I don't understand. Like, I get the most shade. It doesn't make any sense. Like, for everybody to be well, such a my, hater when I'm not even, I ain't even nobody. I ain't even nobody. Bad, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm fine and I'm getting it out the mud. So what, what you hating on me for? Let's come together. We well, one of us position, might have shit. You know what I mean? Position, like, in my position, unfortunately... You know, the way my life is set up, I can't do things like that. I can only give knowledge. You know what I'm saying? If, if I could really, I, I, no, listen to me. But that's good. If, I could, if I really would put myself in a position, and I say that because I got people that inbox me. I got people that comment on some of my stuff and be like, yo, BX12, yo, you were inspiration with some of the things that you be saying. Like, when, to me, I feel like, I'm doing a good job because every day I'm making my part. Like I told you, I deal with two young dudes. They're young. Like, look at my age. These dudes is 26 right. and 27. I keep them in. I keep, I, by me dealing with them and they know, yo, this is a married dude. You know what I'm saying? He did 11 years. He's not with all of that. 
that when we in each other, I say it's the same thing because either way, you giving back. Whether it's right. one person, ten people, a hundred people, you gonna reach one out of those two kids, if not both of them. You know what I mean? And that's two less people in the world. That's just a, just a, a lost cause. But right. I mean, you whatever this. you can do. But you gotta remember this: I mean, is is in that process. You know how the world is. Oh, there's 85 percent of the world that's gonna walk up to that river and turn their heads from that water. And so that's on them. In order for you, listen. Right. In order for you to get them to sip, in order for you gotta, you got to do it yourself. And that's why I relate to what you said because it's called self saving. You can't save nobody else if you can't save yourself. Like if I'm in Word. a position as the same dude I'm talking to, I can't do nothing for you. I can't even tell you the knowledge that I want to because I'm in the same situation. The most you gonna look at me and say, "Dude, you can't tell me shit. You in the same boat as me." How can you change the mind of somebody when you're in the same boat as them? That's not. You're not in the I'm same not saying boat. that we're not in the same boat. boat. No, I'm not listening. I'm you not saying I mean? you're not in the same boat. I'm not saying whether you broke, selling drugs, or question. whatever. Just like the next person, that don't mean that you're in the same boat. Because it could be mentally that y'all, you know what I mean, that y'all on another level. Y'all could both be out there on the block selling dope. But this dude over here thinking, oh, I'm about to go to the store, buy me some Tim's, da 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 da. This person over here, oh my God, my life's about to get off and about to get cut off, and I got children. You know what I mean? So that doesn't mean y'all in the same boat. You know what I mean? You can still get through to people regardless of the situation you in. Because I'm far from rich, far from it. So let me ask you a question. This Let me ask you a question. Called, how you gonna talk act. to a hungry man? How you gonna talk to a hungry man with a thigh in your hand? How what? How, how what? you gonna talk to a hungry man with a chicken thigh in your hand? Like, think about that. We can do that, but in today's time, people are not listening. People, That's not like, true. People, That's not a lot of people are not the, uh, to me personally. The only people that are listening are the adults. People like us are sitting there, like, yeah, you're right. A lot of this youth are not listening. That, I'm looking I, I, I at every disagree. day. Every day I watch, a lot of people are just like, yo, dog, but that's not what you're saying is not putting food the on my table. The first thing what you're saying is not getting my daughter diapers. What you said, Sway? I say I stay quiet for a little while because I, 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 I was agreeing with certain things I was saying, disagreeing with certain things I was saying, but I was making good points. My point being that uh, with, these, with these youths, with these, with these I say youths. With the youth nowadays, <laughs> you trying that's to how we say right? That's how, that's how, that's how he, he, he young youths, right? So, <laughs> are you trying to talk the to in case maybe it's just, it's the children? You know what I mean, <laughs> the ain't no more. They don't want to hear that. They like, yo, listen to this old nigga, man. Yo, what yeah. do you mean, old nigga? I mean, right? Like, you out here, right? Sure. You are here, right, just like me. Listen, oh, to, you ain't the other day, right, right, Bonnie, but why? Exactly. But why? The other day, I was talking to this kid, right? Not the other day. This was like Wait, a couple hold, of months. Hold on, answer that question. But why are they saying that? Oh, right. they, because, because like I said before, like I said before, the old timers are wanting to be like the youth. Who the yeah, hell are they, they supposed they, to listen they, to? This, those same youths when they when they talk to me like that, they they quickly they quickly find out shortly after because you know I got I got a mouth on me. I'm I'm gonna speak. So. I, I educate them instead of trying to chastise them. I educate them. Well, I ask them. Well, yeah. the funny thing, funny thing about that is, right? When you ever see me, when every time I come through here, when when you ever see me, say, "Yo, can, yo, can I get a dollar? Can you buy me a juice from the store? Yo, big bro, can you can you buy me a couple pieces of chicken or something? I never when y'all see me hop out that twenty seventeen, y'all never hear me ask y'all nothing. All I say, "What's up? What's up, little homies?" And I keep it pushing. Y'all look like y'all want me to drop a little knowledge on y'all. Drop a little something on y'all. It's up to y'all to take. If y'all gonna take it, y'all gonna take it. Exactly. Right. Take it. That was the point I was trying to make. Exactly. Thank you. And then you know we had this conversation behind the. You know those who are watching, we had this right. conversation behind the scenes. And like I was saying, this was my whole outlook about it. If we take a room of ten people, all right, and we spit knowledge to them. Out of them 10 people, maybe two will take it away. And that's fine. And that's totally fine. Those same two people will go in the next room and take another group of 10 people. And that, that next group may have three people that take it out of it. You know, it's the, keep it going is the point. So it got to start somewhere. Yeah. 
Because mm-hmm. obviously, on, it's not a long pause because everybody on this station right now is knowledgeable. So obviously, it's still out there. You know what right. I mean? And like, I'm is- only 29. So, you know what I mean? It's it's different generations on this video. So right. it's not all a lost cause. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like he said, if you want to take it, take it. If you don't, don't. Me personally, I'm a sponge. I want to suck up all the knowledge I can. You right. know what I mean? But my, my parents instilled that in me to seek knowledge, to research. You know what I mean? So these they're not getting taught. They're not, get, you know what I mean? They just, all they hear is fighting, cussing, hollering. So that's oh, what they do. Oh, fighting, cussing, hollering. You know what I mean? They're not being taught. They're not being disciplined. So oh, what's crazy is that comes into the actual culture of what y'all want to do. You know, y'all trying to come into this culture. And a lot of people, while I say a lot of, unsigned artists or striving uh, aspiring artists you know everybody's out to get in this industry and you know they want to be famous da 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 this that and the third but they quick to forget like what it started off of you know what i'm saying like back then there was a message these these rappers back then they was spitting a message out to the not only to the youth but to us you know what i mean and i feel like that culture has been lost for a while now and we need to get that back on track. Man. So this is why we have this platform to be honest with y'all. You know, so y'all can some of y'all artists can get that. You know, next Monday, for example, we got um K Born Rivers and DJ Scott LaRock Jr. coming through along with um Vega Don to come give y'all some knowledge. You know what I mean? And they're very experienced in the business. Very experienced. They're gonna come by and give y'all some knowledge on their their dealings and you know what they had to, to to deal with in the industry, outside of the industry, with different people. And you know y'all need that because if yeah. we keep like sitting here, you know, letting all these artists get on that don't have no fucking type of substance, giving this shit to our kids. Like I, I don't know about y'all, but six nine ain't got shit for my kids. Nothing. You don't talk about shit. Nothing. But so see, we, we, you know, one thing with the kids, you can't even take that away from them. The way they are, the way they are right now, you can't take that music away from them. You can't us telling them, yo, that's that that music, stupid, it's senseless. That's going to make them draw to it even more because we don't like it. No, I, I'm, saying, I'm not going to sit there and tell them that. But at least give, let's get some more light on some of these other. Well known yes. rappers, but not even well known, but people that actually have a fucking message. Can we see some more of that? That's all you know I'm saying. Listen, you know what I tell him? My son's 17. He tried to tell me, yo, but dad, but this song is cool. I'm like, yo, that's that's all right. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you this story real quick. My son was 13, my son was 13 years old. He said, Yo, dad, you know that Drake album just dropped. No, he was 14. He said that Drake album just dropped. Yo, I know all the words to that whole album already. I said, Woo! Yo, I said, that's wicked. You know the whole word? You know all the words to the whole album? You said, no, boy. Yeah, man, you you really using your intelligence, boy. You, yeah, you you gifted. He said, word, right? Psst, telling you, everybody, I be impressed at everybody how I know all the words. I said, yo, you heard that You heard that Dr. King album? He said, Dr. King. I said, that, <laughs> yeah. I, you, ain't, you don't know all the words of that? Oh, man, you got to know the words of that, G. Word. He was like, what, "What? What? Like? What are you talking about? What is, he said, what is, what is it on iTunes? <laughs> on YouTube, real quick. Me, let me hit him. Boom. He like, oh, oh, you talking about Doc? He said, but Dad, why, why would I need to? I said, why would you need to what? He said, what did that Drake album teach you? And what did you learn from? What, what, you, what, what could you possibly learn from this speech? Hmm. Somebody that died." For being passionate about what they was doing to open doors for you. Right. He said, nah, I guess I, I, I guess you're right. I guess I should know what the words to this. I said, yeah. So when you come to me saying, yeah, I know, I know the whole Ricky Rose album, that don't impress me, kid. But um, can you can you take that Drake album out of public collection pieces? We're, we're not, no, it's a I mean, no. Nah, see, you know, this my son is, <laughs> now my yeah. son is light skin. He's light skin, so I gotta let him do that. I can't even. Oh, so, he get, oh, so he get his light skin on right now. Oh man, so he light skin, so he. You know what I'm saying, and he fake light skin. He's a little darker than light skin now, but <laughs> I mean, he live in North Carolina too, so you know, so he get a little darker. But he's 
little, you little caramel. Let me see a little caramel. You know what I mean? But so he on his Albie Shore shit right now. He fell yeah, it. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. He's. I'm saying like <laughs> Drake is the new unibrow. Listen, I can't. I can't take that from him. When I, <laughs> I listen to, to Albie Shore. What I used to yo listen I used to listen to the <laughs> words wait nah hold hold up nah so you ain't gonna just skip the fuck over what the fuck you just did you just call this man the new unibrow yeah he the new unibrow I'm fucking done like you that's it for you like seriously no, like, no no more for you tonight no more I'll be sure it was on a hot street just like Drake is right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they both light skin. And they both, yo, Drake had the unibrow. He had it. He got great. He got he got he got good people that, that work on his look and all that. They keep all that split. And the skin, <laughs> yo, light skin is out of style, to be honest yo, with you. Like it looks like it connects look okay. like connect with his shape up. Like, you know what I mean? That's a whole fact. I can't. I fucking can't, yo. That boy that, 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 doing or something. Let, let, let me move on to the next question because I, I can't with your ass right now. I cannot. Word. Shout out to Drake, though. <laughs> Yo, you ain't... <laughs> I, ain't a, I ain't a hater. Listen. He know he got a, a, a uniform. Yo, I cannot. So look, Ronnie, how do you define yourself as an oh. artist? Oh, oh. I don't know um, what happened. I'm definitely not on the no more. driven. Um, I when I wake up, all I can think about is music. I eat, sleep, and breathe music. Um, this is what I was meant to do. You know what I mean? This is what I want to do. I don't care if I get rich, don't get rich. You know what I mean? Get signed, don't get signed. I'm going to continue doing music. I'm going to continue pushing. Um, you know what I mean? This is what I want to do. It's my passion. I'm dedicated. I'm determined. I'm not hungry. I'm starving. I say that all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because people, oh, I'm hungry. Now I'm starving. I ain't shooting for the for the stars. I'm shooting for the moon. You know what I mean? Like music is me. Everything. Fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. And um, let me ask you this as well. What do you think that your fans and followers now and potential followers? Um, will get from your music? Honestly, I'm hoping um, we'll get back to the to the speaking about females. We'll get back to the natural beauty and people accepting their natural beauty um, because it's. I feel like we in a time today where people feel like they have to look a certain way or they have to have a certain type of hair or shape or you know what I mean, all this makeup or whatever. Whatever you do, that's fine, but I really, you know, think about Eve. Think about Queen Latifah, MC Light, Raw Digger. Did you see all that? Nah, they was natural no. on stage and they was spitting bars. They was telling stories. You know what I'm saying? Satisfied. Like, not who you calling satisfied. a bitch? Like, you know what I mean? Respect for women. They're not you not know, so. Female artists is taking their body. Say what now? Off. I said, they're not going to be satisfied to these female artists are like, they're taking their body parts off. Like, I apologize. I don't know what happened to my phone. Are you good? And that's Word. Good. And that, and that's probably why I'm getting a lot of shade because I'm I'm natural. Like if somebody say, "Oh, I give you a, a billion dollar contract if you cut your dreadlocks," I'm not signing that contract. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, I'm sorry. Like I I can I can vouch for that. You know what I mean? Like I'm not. You know, like India, I agree. I'm not. I mean, this is this is Bonnie. This is Queen. You know what I mean? Take it or leave it. You know what I mean? So really, I hope people take away inspiration, hope, encouragement. Um, and I, I want people to listen to my song. Like, you know what? She right. You know what I mean? I'm beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I can I can reach my goal. I could be an artist. I could be a chef. You know what I mean? I could do this. You know, you know what I mean? I can fight through the, that, through the huh? hurdle. You know, it's funny that you mentioned India Ari. She actually, because I, I used to love her, but I noticed now, since you know she's been wrapped up in the industry, she has actually bleached her skin. She has bleached it. Yes. You know that. Yes. And I was so saddened by it. It just, I, I don't know, you know, what kind of push they have on you once you get in that industry. But That's clearly, my whole point. Like, it's sad. You Sammy Sosa? Like that's the thing. That's the thing. Like why? Why let change? Why let people change you? When she came out, she was so soulful, natural, down to earth. And once you 
start becoming commercial and doing what other people tell you to do, then that's when you lose all, all passion and then there's no passion in your lyrics and no people is feeling it. Just like a chef. You know what I mean? If he, he used passion in his dishes and they taste good. If you ain't feeling it in pot, it's going to show in the, in the dish. You know what I mean? So Facts. it's the same thing with artists. Facts. So I'm going to um, ask this last question for BX. BX, what do what type of change do you hope to accomplish with your music? You know I ain't got no hair on my tongue, right? <laughs> Go ahead, do you? <laughs> are you talk are you talking in in myself? I yeah, can't see it myself, it changes in myself, or are you talking about as far as the world or people that I'm trying the people that are listening to me? The people that are listening to you. What kind of Change do you hope to accomplish with your, by them hearing your music? You know what? You know what? And this is probably why I'll probably not get in the game because the answer is like this. This is why I said if I do make it and they interview me, they're going to be like, shit, well, he keeps it basic. I'm going to keep it 100. As you should. The, the, what, I want, what, I, what I want from the people, he's nice. I understand. He's nice. I'm keeping it a hundred. Don't get mad at me, people. Don't be like, what? I'm keeping it a hundred. I'm keeping it so much a hundred. I want the change. I want people to hear me and be like, damn, yo, this basically the same shit that I, any other rapper would want. Damn, yo, he came out the hood. He, he did something with himself. Wow. If he could do it, I could do it. I'm keeping it a hundred. That, that's big. That, I don't. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a politician, you know what I mean? I'm not here to change nobody's lives. I'm here to tell you that you have options, that's it. I'm not here to sit here in a suit and tie and be like, listen, when I was your age, you know, they don't wanna fucking hear that shit. They don't wanna hear that. They don't wanna hear what you used to do. I, I can't hear they nothing wanna, he's saying. I'm sorry to say, but people wanna see, what are you doing now? Don't come up to me talking about how I need to change my life, dude. You and you can't even pay your bills. Don't come up to me. This is how these youngest think nowadays. Don't come up to me talking about yo, dog. If you stay out here in these streets and you the same nigga later on, you gonna come see me and cop um, an ape for loud from me. They don't want to hear that shit. Nobody wants to hear you. Like I'm sorry to say that, but I'm in I'm in the streets almost every day. Every day I'm walking around the youth. You got some that hear me out, but still do the same thing. You know what I mean? So my 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 opinion that what I want to change is my life. I'm tired of not being able to do for my wife. Jobs ain't knocking down my door, and I'm doing everything that I fucking possibly can to stay above water. I went and got my OSHAs. I went and got my flagger. I went and got my contractor's um certificate. I, I done had jobs. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing everything. My man, my opinion, what I want to change is my life. I'm tired of not being able to do it. And if it, if this music can get me to the point where I, without having to sell my soul or without having to go through no doors, if I could just, if somebody paid me right now, yo, dog, I got a thousand dollars for you for a show. I, we love your boy. I'm happy. That made a change in my life. I don't want what everybody else want. I don't want to walk on stage and be like, hey, this is so, I don't want that. People want music for a different reason. To me, music, it, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me, I found something that takes my mind away from the struggle. I found something that takes my mind away from I can't get my wife a fucking Christmas gift or I can't get me a pair of Tim's for the winter. It takes me away from that. I can talk about that shit on paper. I don't have to go outside and bust somebody in the fucking head to get their money to do that. This is my escape. Being able to express how I Great. feel, people, whether you listen to me or not, that's my that's my therapeutic moment. So whether I make it or not, fuck you. I'm doing what makes me feel good. I'm not here to change the world. I gotta change me before I can change anybody. I Great. can't go to nobody and be like, yo, shorty, put that down because I'm liable to fucking pick it up. I I'm keeping it hundred. Right. Don't put that gun down because I'm the nigga that might pick it up in a struggle. I'm keeping it 100. Okay. I'm not sugarcoating That's nothing. Good. I'm hurting right now. So for me to sit here and lie to anybody, yo, I want the youth to come. No, I understand these young niggas because I live in the projects with them. I live with them. I don't. When they don't got heat, I don't got heat. Sometimes when the nights when they can't eat, I haven't eaten. When they moms is going through some shit, I'm in the house, my wife is going through some shit. 
So I got to change me. I'm keeping it 100. So everybody out there, if we all just stop fucking worrying about why this nigga got Jordans on or why this nigga got, if we just stop worrying about other people, period, and pay attention more to ourselves and our self change, that's when we'll make a difference because we wouldn't give a fuck about what's going on. Nigga, this is how you beat the system. You continue to try to do your best until you rise. This is how you don't fall victim. I don't care if I'm not in a luxury house. I got a roof over my head, though. I don't care if I didn't have a steak tonight. I had a crackhead soup. I'm all right. This is what I want to change. So to everybody out there, my message to you, I don't want to change you. I just want to give you options. I've come to my life where I found that I have options. So all I can tell you is sit back for a little bit, think for a little while, really see yourself sitting behind them bars because I did 11 years. I've been shot a couple of times. I've been stabbed in my, I've been through it. I've been through it. I'm still not in a position to sit there and tell somebody what the fuck they could do with their life and how they should come up. The most I can tell them is what I'm still going through and hope that they don't want to go through what I'm going through. When they get older, that's it. That's all I could do. I could sit there and walk. I could give you a map to the river, but when you get there, it's on you if you want to jump in that and get wet. That's not my choice. Right. I'm not God. I, 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 I'm not here on earth to tell you what your life should be like or what it's going to be. I can only tell you what I've been through and hope that you be like, damn, I don't want to go through that. Let me see if there's a different path. I'm, I'm sorry, but my answer to that question is what I want to change my life. I know that's right. Myself. That's what's up. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go hungry. I don't want to ever be homeless. I don't ever want to look my wife in the face and say, we can't be together because I can't support you or you can't support me. So this is why I do this. If not, I'm still waiting for a job. I put it in God's hands. I can only carry but so much. That's and that's keeping up. it 100. That's what's up. Well, you know what, though? For one, let me thank both of y'all for first coming on the show. You know, Bonnie, dope artist. I'm going to let you go ahead and tell everybody where they can find your music at. So you go ahead and take that time to do that. All right. Uh, my regular Facebook page is Bonnie Vincent, B as in victory. My music page is Bonnie Vincent, Queen of the South. Um, the link is at BV, capital B, capital V, Queen of the South, capital Q O T S. Um, if you want to book me, it's book Queen of the South at gmail.com, book Q O T S. My Instagram is Bonnie256. My YouTube is Queen of the South. You can um my, my little snippets is my little freestyle snippets is all over my page as well. If you want to get a feel of um what I'm working with. Um I do have a couple things lined up as far as dropping singles and videos. So I'm looking real forward to that because to be honest with y'all, I've been rapping all my life, but I just started promoting myself about five to six months ago and it's Oh, oh, I think Bonnie froze up. Well, since she froze up, BX, you want to tell everybody where we can find your music at? Facts. Facts. You definitely can find me on Facebook, BX Suave. My IG is BX Suave. You know, those are the places you can find me. My music on SoundCloud, which is I'm trying to definitely get a whole new SoundCloud because I definitely got so much more music coming out. What I got up there right now, you know, is a couple freestyles for the peoples. But um, for any bookings or anything like that, just DM me, inbox me. You know what I'm saying? Anybody want? I do. I do live video freestyles for people. I do requests for people. So anytime you you sitting at your job and you just want to hear some bars, you could DM me. I'll definitely video chat those. I'm not in it for the money, so I'm definitely giving away free hard bars. I love doing this. This I do this. I do this because I got the craft. Not to even be like that, but it's like Bonnie said earlier. My father was a singer. You know what I'm saying? So it's just not like when people hear me, they be like, "Did you write that?" No, I don't know. I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. You can ask me a music, a thousand music questions. I probably won't have a thousand answers for you about music. I'm like, as I got the drumline syndrome. I don't know shit about music. I just know how to spit balls. I just, I just know how to go. I'm keeping it a hundred. <laughs> like it's just something in me. Like when I hear beats, 
It's like, I forgot the name of that movie, but that kid killed that dude with the little f- spoon when he was working inside the little spot with the soup. He was like some Asian or something like that. Mm-hmm. I forgot what it was, but it's something like that. Like I hear beats and it's like a trigger. What? I'm going in. I've had people be like, yo, dog, how long you been rapping? I've been rapping since I was nine, but but if like, it's only but so many times I've written down. Like, I love this shit so much that I feel like I'm musically inclined. Like, it's natural. I can hear a country beat, and I'll just start singing a country song, and my wife will look at me and be like, yo, you crazy. Mm-hmm. Or I'll hear anything, and it just comes out of me. I've I've wrote an R&B songs. Like, it's just something that's naturally in me, and I love this shit. Whether I get hurt or if I ever make it, I'll be fucking 90 years old still spitting a free I, I, I don't carry care. a little tune. So that again, Bonnie? Yeah. Bonnie, I already told you. I'm going to send you that beat. Okay. So, um, again, we want to thank oh, me and uh, my co host want to thank you both for y'all for coming on the show, sharing yeah, y'all. Right. Knowledge. Salute, salute. You know, y'all definitely, you know, had. A, a ton of knowledge to come on here with tonight, you know. So I appreciate y'all. And again, if anybody watching or listening, y'all can find both of these people on Facebook, on Instagram as well. And if you're in the Atlanta area, I know Vani has a show coming up. What's the date on that, Vani? Saturday, 24th. Okay. So if y'all in the Atlanta area, yeah. check her out. All put right. them turkey sandwiches in your purses, <laughs> niggas. Put the turkey sandwiches in your little in your little poodle pouches that they be carrying around their shoulders. Wallace. Yeah, go see that. <laughs> go see that. Yeah. So sway. Yeah, we're gonna post the flyer for that on the page. Yeah, we're gonna post the flyer for it on the page for sure. Um, exactly. Swag, you got any last moments before we wrap it up? No, I'd just like to thank y'all for coming on the show, man. I know the, I know the viewers really appreciated it. I appreciate it. Jazz appreciated it. Don't for sure. People. I got a question for Swag. Let's go. I need I need a battle, Swag. You got somebody for me? I got I got um listen, I told you we we, we gonna we're gonna talk. We gonna right talk. behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got I got something for you though. We're gonna talk. You know, so uh, but also, y'all, before um, I definitely got them big and bull head balls. Also, before we go, y'all don't forget, you know, t shirts on sale, $22.50 yes. plus shipping. We got them in female and male as Hit well. The the All right, the link is on the gonna be on the page. If y'all haven't seen it already, I will post it again. But y'all get these shirts because they are going fast. So get them while I still have them. You know what I mean? And we want to thank y'all viewers for watching us tonight and, you know, all of y'all interacting with y'all comments and stuff like that. And we'll see y'all Friday for Battle Rap Friday. Yo, yo, if nobody get one of them shirts, your baby moms is cheating or your baby father cheating. So get those now. (laughs) If you don't buy one of them shirts, your baby moms is cheating. If you don't get one of them shirts, your baby daddy cheating. That ass. You got to have one of the shirts to keep them in the house. Or her. That's a fact. You want them If you don't get a search of baby mother, your baby father, middle, middle, middle name is Dodgers. Fuck that. Yeah, no, I don't got. I don't. I don't. I don't have no words for y'all. Like for real. <laughs> the new name. The new name for side pieces is mac and cheese, coleslaw, mashed potatoes. I can't. I can't. AK AK thigh juice. Good. You know AK what? AK thigh juice. The long can. You know what I mean? Not the other. We'll see y'all Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time for Battle Rap Friday. Pounds. So tune in then. And don't forget, next Monday, we got Vega Dog, we got K- um, excuse me, K-Born Rivers, and Scott oh LaRock Jr. All three of them will be on the show Monday night. So y'all they spit come balls? In. They spit huh? balls? They spit balls? You're, those are legends, honey. Legends. I know. Legend. I said, are they gonna are they gonna spit balls? I don't know. I don't know. Anything can happen. Anything I definitely need to see that. Yo, it's so real. It's so real. I'm not gonna even be on the show. Yeah. That ass. He he's gonna be in the comment. He's gonna be I'm, in the oh, comment. Okay. I'm gonna be here on the live, but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be on the show that day. Okay. Y'all, okay. You know, okay. Y'all okay. Get this knowledge, especially this is definitely gonna be for the culture episode next Monday. Swagger. Swagger. 
I got you. Talk, talk nice to me, Swagger. Let's go. We're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. All right. So we're going to see y'all Friday night, y'all. Y'all have a blessed night. Everybody salute. Something for the people. Huh?